All right. Evening, everyone. Happy Sunday. Oscars night. Daylight savings time. All that fun stuff. Uh, welcome into uh, the Master of Dungeons Twitch channel. Of course, tonight we are playing, uh, continuing our playthrough of the Keys from the Golden Vault. Uh, we did finish up uh, the first adventure in part one and part two. I uh, finished up part two last uh, Sunday. Uh, tonight we'll be starting the second adventure for second level characters. Uh, tonight we'll run part one again, and this is tonight's adventure is called the Stygian Gambit. Uh, kind of a quick uh, reminder for uh, everyone watching, we are playing by Adventurers League rules. Um, all of our characters did level up to level two last week. Uh, one of the, uh, at the end of the, uh, the conclusion of the uh, Merc Marvel level, so each character was able to uh, select a uh, uncommon magic item. So first, let's go ahead and introduce the characters. Uh, again, I am uh, Dia Mitch, uh, Master of Dungeons. Uh, let's go ahead and start with Stinkfoot. Go ahead and introduce your character again. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you took for level two and what magic item you took. I am playing Stinkfoot Alabaster Grasper. Um, I am currently a level two school of abjuration wizard. I took the abjuration school at level two. Um, for magic items, I acquired a broom of flying. Figure that's something every uh, heist participant might need at some point in their career. And a wizard. And, um, yeah. For my spells for level two, I got a couple more first level spells. I took witch bolt and I took catapult. I think it'll be fun to catapult things around some of the places we're going to be infiltrating. Very cool, very cool. And snaps. Introduce uh, yourself. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, I'm uh, playing Gimbal Snaps McCracken, um, a deep known rogue. And I've uh, taken the magic initiate. And so I have a little bit of a a bardic uh, spellcasting ability, in addition to my roguish abilities. And I, uh, last adventure, uh, on successful completion, I took the uh, Broom of Flying as uh, my magic item. All right, excellent. And then, of course, we have Reginald. I am going to be playing the Herengon Ranger Reginald. At level two, I got to pick up a couple spells, start getting a little bit more into the class, but for my magic item, I decided to go with a Hat of Disguise. Excellent. All right, so those are our cast of heroes. Uh, just a quick shout out to uh, our friend uh, EB from EB Lounge. Uh, he was going to be joining us uh, starting this evening, uh, but with the, he has sponsorship by Kawhi Pianos and uh, does have a uh, fairly heavy load with them, and they added some new stuff for him to be working on on Sunday evening. So unfortunately, he is not going to be able to join us. Uh, we talked to him, might maybe jump in for some guest spots uh, later on down the road for the different live games. Uh, speaking of the live play games, uh, we did finally get our application together. We did release it on the private server last evening for uh, our members uh, that have been with us for a couple of years. Uh, to give them a first shot at that. But at the conclusion of our session tonight, uh, on the community Discord server, we are going to post that link where you can uh, fill out an application and apply to uh, play uh, an adventure, parts one and two with us uh, for the live play games. Uh, we're going to give two spots out uh, each uh, adventure we play. Um, to, to start off, it's just going to be kind of uh, first come, first serve to play in the... Uh, Two parts, and then after that, we'll bring in a couple new people for the uh, following week, a uh, couple of weeks to play the uh, second parts, and then try to get as many people in as we can uh, uh, between now and then. Of course, uh, you know, there's uh, information, more information on the uh, application, but we will post that in our stream announcements uh, channel uh, this evening. Uh, after the, sh the session's over, we will pin that up there as well, uh, so everyone will be able to... Uh, Check that out if you're on our community Discord server, which if you're not, you can join by uh, below by going to the About section. Uh, you can go right to the Discord panel, uh, click on that, and that will give you an invitation to our community server. Uh, feel free, anyone, it is a community server, anyone can invite uh, people, so feel free to invite your friends and your gate, your people you play D&D uh, &D with, uh, friends and family, things of that nature. Um, so I think we are probably ready to go. Uh, just a quick note as well. Uh, 
Keys from the Golden Vault can be played in pretty much any setting. Uh, since we are playing for, uh, Adventurers League, we have set it in the Forgotten Realms. Uh, specifically, just to add a little bit more flavor, since it's all, you know, uh, having to be you know, quiet and sneaky and uh, things like that. Uh, we have set ours, uh, all of our adventures as much, much as we can uh, in the uh, City of Splendors in Waterdeep. So some of the place names in the adventures have kind of changed a little bit. I went through and kind of fit them in uh, every time we start the adventure into different areas of uh, Waterdeep. Uh, that being said, I do have a couple of interesting surprises for our players that are really cool, I think. Uh, first, uh, of course, you do re all remember the wonderful map city of Waterdeep that we have. Uh, you want to scroll out a little bit to be able to check everything, but we did bring that in for you. Uh, we have our your parties uh, sitting over here at Troll Skull Alley. Uh, for those of you that uh, tuned in last week, uh, our adventurers uh, are working for the uh, Golden Vault, which is a secret society that looks to do good when good can't do uh, it lawfully. Uh, the Golden Vault does it usually illegally, uh, but there's always good uh, and uh, uh, just causes behind what they do. And they have been set up uh, for their hideout uh, is a, a Troll Skull Manor in Troll Skull Alley. Uh, and their patron and mentor uh, is not their handler. That is uh, Mira. Rahir is their, uh, is their uh, handler. Uh, but the person that is their... Um, uh, mentor patron, if you will, you know, giving a place to uh, sleep, to work, to plan uh, is uh, what Braden Hawks, a, a private investigator that works around the area of the Troll Skull Alley. And uh, their uh, home tavern, as it were, is a place called Lift Spirits, L I F apostrophe S, Lift Spirits, which is uh, connected to the manor house of Troll Skull Alley. And here is the surprise for everyone. Um, I did. You might not be able to see much at the moment because of the fact that uh, uh, the screen uh, is set up for your dynamic lighting. Um, but if you would, you can pull your characters out over here. Where am I pinging on the Rule 20 uh, VTT? Uh, while they're doing that, uh, just, uh, yep, you can just grab your character name from your journal and drag it out there. Um, just so everyone knows, we are uh, playing uh, with the Roll20 virtual tabletop. Um, it's got a lot of uh, fun, great features. They're adding a lot of uh, new stuff uh, every week uh, to it as well. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in learning a little bit about a little bit more about Roll20, I do talk uh, some uh, about it and give a few uh, little tutorials on Tuesday nights uh, for Dungeons and Deliberations. And Stinkfoot, you're able to get your character out there? It should be there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so we got some nice little maps of uh, Troll Skull Alley in the manor for you. Nice. Oh, cool. And all that. So let me go ahead and bring you back over here to our starting page or back to our map of Waterdeep, I should say. And uh, of course, it's been a few days since your successful heist. Uh, getting the Merc Meyer Stone, uh, getting it back for the professor, uh, re getting her reinstated to the uh, Waterdeep University. And uh, of course, there's uh, the headlines for a couple of days wondering what happened at the Museum of Natural History, the uh, Waterdeep Wazoo. Uh, strange uh, things happening at the museum. Chaos from a rumors of one of the predators in their uh, display came back to life and caused havoc. And in that havoc, uh, uh, looks as if a few relics were stolen. Uh, and they're still looking for uh, the people that did it. And then the next day, uh, you really see only just like a small little blurb about it. Within two or three days, uh, there's no mention of it uh, in the Wazoo or any of the broadsheets uh, around Waterdeep. Uh, welcome in. Yes, welcome in, Ulysses and uh, Angelus. Uh, but of course, uh, you're uh, just relaxing, uh, a nice uh, midweek morning, uh, down with Lift Spirits, uh, having some uh, uh, good morning, uh, your, break your break fast, and uh, some uh, morning uh, drinks, and 
after probably about mid meal or whatever, uh, you do see a, a small torch, uh, which are some of the urchins uh, that go around delivering messages, uh, drops a box uh, on the table and says, uh, any one of you uh, stink, snaps, or Reginald? Um, that would be us. Uh, okay. And he slides the box over to you and says, that's for you. Um, the person said to not to make sure to open it in private. And he kind of holds out his hand. I flip him two copper. He grabs him with his wide eye at two copper. He like smiles really big and he runs out the door. <laughs> so you have his call? Check it for traps, is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead and give me an investigation check. Oh, dear. Investigation. Uh, It definitely seems to be trapped. However, (laughs) it's got a little spot, like, where you put your thumb where a lock would be. Hmm. I look at snaps. Um, well, I will, uh, perhaps we should you know, take stick my thumb somewhere. I stick my thumb on it. Uh, 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 go ahead, Reginald. Right, well, as Snap says, you're getting ready to put your thumb out there. Reginald, go ahead. What were you saying? Uh, perhaps we should take this somewhere private if we're going to try and open up. You're right. What was I thinking? <laughs> I mean, um, uh, cool. hey, there's a closet. The courier you do was have, nice enough to tell us. Yeah, yeah. And you do have, uh, of course, your private rooms uh, up in the manor, and of course, you have been using the attic, uh, where uh, actually Morn worked with you last week uh, for a little while. Uh, but you do have the attic up there where you can do plan a, a lot of your different work and such. So you can head up to the attic, and of course, uh, once you get up there, snaps, you can put your thumb on there. Uh, you feel a little warmth, and then you feel a tingling of magic and the box pops open oh wow and uh, inside is a golden key these things keep getting more interesting every time i'm not touching the key as you recall uh you do have a music box that was given to you by the golden vault when you first began and uh the practice is once you get your key, uh, that means they have a mission for you. You'll have to take the key and insert it into the uh, music box and see what happens. Be a mage hand. Uh, <laughs> sure, you can do it with mage hand if you wish. Mage hand that key into the music box. And uh, as you put it in the music box, the lid pops open and a soothing voice says the following. Greetings, operatives. An ally of the Golden Vault named Verity Kai had her life savings stolen from her by a devious gambling partner. We found an opportunity to right this wrong. This quest, should you choose to undertake it, requires you to infiltrate the afterlife casino, steal a statuette and a sum of money, meet with Verity at the Sleeping Last Tavern to learn more details. Good luck, operatives. And when you close the lid of the music box, the golden key vanishes. Ooh, cool trick. Okay, just me double checking here. It's Verity Kai was the name? Verity Kai. Yeah, I'll put that into uh, your chat for you over here. Oh, thank you. And we are to obtain a statuette and a sum of money. Yes. And I'm sorry, it's the Sleeping Wench is the name of the uh, the uh, tavern. And the Sleeping Wench Jam. It's good to have these things written down. Yeah, I'm typing them into our uh, stream chat too for the... Uh... 
I appreciate that. Uh, is either of you familiar where the Sleeping Wench Tavern is? Well, yeah, go ahead and give me a uh, history check if uh, you're skilled in history, or if you uh, happen to be from Waterdeep, uh, the Waterdeep area as well, you can uh, uh, go ahead and make a history check. I have neither. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. No, it doesn't it's, it sounds vaguely familiar, but uh you could probably speak with lifts or uh any one of the uh uh workers down in the uh in the tavern below you uh to get information about where that would be. Okay. Yeah, we could absolutely ask Lyf. They would probably know. Right. Oh uh, yeah. So you do discover that the Sleeping Winch is a quiet tavern in the Dock Ward. Big city. All the way to the Dock Ward. Oh, yeah. yes. Uh, specifically on the corner of Prespo Lane and Snail Street. Prespo Lane and Snail Street. Okay. Wow. Hmm. Of course, the dock ward is down here to the south. And Prespo Lane and uh, Stale Street right here. So it's located right here at this corner. Yep. Nice. All right. Okay. So if you need to, uh, you can go meet with Verity uh, Kai first. Uh, if you have any, uh, I know that some of you did a little bit of shopping in between adventures with it being Adventures League. Um, so if there's nothing you have to pick up. If you just want to go ahead and head on down to uh, the Sleeping Winch, you can do so. Uh, do you want to take any of your adventuring gear with you? Uh, do you want to kind of leave it here behind? Do you want, What do you want to uh, carry with you? Just load up and go? Um, yes, I'm, I'm going to leave some of my magical items found, uh, lock them away securely. I'm just going to take my Bag of holding. Okay. okay. I'll be ready to go. Of all my stuff, I'll take the broom. Okay. I'm going to reach into my bag and pull out a hat. And I work it in between the, the two ears, and it looks like I'm in common garb. Mm -hmm. And for our, our viewers, uh, since we are playing Adventures League, uh, the adventurers uh, at the end, the conclusion of Adventures, they uh, the, the party can keep all of the magic items they find. As a matter of fact, each one of them gets a copy of the magic items that, that, that they find. Uh, but because they're only in Tier 1, they can only bring up to five common uh, magic items, up to five consumables, like potions and scrolls, and then one uh, magic item of unqual one permanent magic item of uncommon or higher quality. So each one of them, they get to keep all these magic items, but because of their tier, they can only bring one uh, to the uh, uh, table tonight. So we have a broom flying, a bag of holding, and a hat of disguise. All right, so uh, you're able to make your way down um, to the uh, Sleeping Wench. Uh, it's about three-story tall tavern. Uh, it is uh, a fairly uh, quieter uh, tavern. Uh, in the dock ward area. Uh, and uh, as you enter in, uh, looking around, you, you do mention, it does mention that uh, to meet uh, Verity at the, in the back room of the uh, Sleeping Winch. And uh, you make your way back there. Uh, not really too many patrons here. It's just, you know, after your, uh, it's about mid morning now. Uh, by the time you make your way down uh, through the streets of Waterdeep, all the way from uh, the, uh, North Ward, where your uh, your home is, all the way down to the southern end of the city, to the Dock Ward. And uh, the back room of the Sleeping Winch is well appointed with a polished wood table. Uh, you see some paintings of local landscapes, uh, some wrought iron lanterns. Uh, there are some platters uh, on the table that are piled with some food, uh, if you're still a little bit famished. And then a pot of tea steams in the center of the table. And uh, you do notice that the figure there is a, a uh, tea thing. Uh, has red skin, uh, cold blue, uh, cobalt blue eyes, and curly white hair. Uh, that she wears in long twists, and uh, black horns rise from her forehead in tight spirals. Uh, thank you for accepting my invitation. I am Verity Kai, 
what I'm about to discuss with you requires the utmost secrecy. I can't stress to you enough how important it is that you speak nothing of what you hear within these four walls. Since you are agents of the organization, I assume you can all agree to this. And she looks to you all uh, expectantly. Agree to what? To speak nothing of what you hear within these four walls. And she looks at you quizzically. <laughs> I agree to what? <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. I, she, I, I agree. kind of uh, looks at your odd uh, humor and then she, she kind of smiles a bit and says, Yeah, I think that you might be the right group for this. And after she gets all the assurances from all of you uh, to keep quiet about the mission, she says, Well, the Afterlife Casino is a new Nine Hells themed attraction. Built of the cliffside along the cliff ride on the west side of Waterdeep. The owner, one Quentin Toggle Pockets, built it using prize money he stole from me. And I'd like to eat for you to give him hell. Is hosting some sort of tournament there, whether it be cards or some other game of chance, I'm not sure. But I want you to steal the Irony statue that he plans to award as a prize. Embarrassing him in front of the big names of the tournament. And I also want you to steal back the 5,000 gold pieces he stole from me. Bring the statuette and the gold here, and I'll be waiting for you. Okay. Um, great. Uh, when is the contest? Uh, I believe it's uh, you have you'll have just about forty eight hours to steal the statue, as the tournament actually ends two nights from now, and the statuette will depart with the winner. Uh, okay. Now, I know you might be tempted to wait until after the statuette is awarded, and try to lift it from the winner on their way out or once they're out, but uh, that won't suffice. I want. When he goes to find to present that statue, that it not be there. Ah, I want the humiliation. Prepared. Yes, as, yes, as much as possible. You can see a little bit of a uh, uh, frustration and a uh, uh, little bit of anger when she says she wants him to suffer humiliation, shame him publicly. I don't mean to pry, but um, I will pry uh, just a bit. Um, could we uh, have any misgivings about this person? If you have a problem with him, is should we watch out for anything? Is there anything you could tell us about him? Well, he's a gnome gambler. Gnome gambler, okay. And By a him. liar and a long con artist. Oh, yes, yes. Mm. See, I, I, I toured the, toured the uh, gambling circuit for a number of years, making a name for myself, winning fairly a, a fair uh, number of large tournaments, uh, playing Three Dragon Ante. Ah, Three and Dragon Ante, yes. We hit it off when I met Quentin on the circuit. We formed a plan to save enough winnings to open our own casino. Just when we seemed poised to put our plan into action, he disappeared, taking all of our money with him. Only to resurface now, having built the Afterlife Casino, using the stolen money. Wow. Terrible. Double cross, do you wear? Hmm? Of course, uh, hearing that, you can kind of understand why uh, she has this... Uh, little chip on her shoulder when it comes to uh, Quentin. Have she goes, I can... Seen Go ahead. inside of this casino? Uh, I have. And I do have a bit of information for you. Nice. And uh, she gives you a hand-drawn floor plan of the casino and what she believes are the employee-only areas. Hmm. I will pop this up for everybody on stream. Sure. Good job, Reginald. Yeah. 
And really quick, I just want to thank our viewers' feedback. Mm -hmm. If you will notice, we now have our tokens next to each of our cameras, so it's a little easier to designate who is who when we're moving around on the map. That's so cool. I know, right? Design Lizard stealing a uh, statuette on the night of the Oscars, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's like post that in the chat. <laughs> and this Oscar goes, oh, it's not here. Oh, gone. Uh, but she does hand you that and she says, look, I know that the 5,000 gold seems like a lot, but I, I do need that money back myself, but I can't afford to pay you 100 gold each. And of course... I'll cede any claim on any additional coin or other items you acquire at the, within the casino. I just want my 5,000 gold back. Understood. Sounds fair. And as you're looking over the uh, map, she uh, pulls out a uh, what appears to be a small bag made of purple fabric with red stitching. All I need for you to do is take this bag, put the money and the statuette in it, and bring it back to me. Purple bag, red stitching. Hmm, interesting. Is this special bag? It has to uh, be this bag? Yeah, uh, go ahead, uh, Stink, and give me an Arcana check. Will do. Oh, yeah, it does seem to be uh, very similar to the bag that your companion uh, uh, Snaps is carrying right now, a bag of holding. And uh, she uh, goes through, as Reginald asked about, uh, has she been to casino and have any idea about it? Uh, she kind of uh, points on the map. She goes, well, see, uh, the arrival brings everyone into this uh, this piece of the river. Uh, that comes in from the bay outside. Uh, kind of wooden boats will shuttle uh, everyone to and from the casino. Uh, it's kind of built inside a cavern uh, uh, underneath the cliff shore. And of course, the uh, boats ply the bay and shore that lead into the cavern. I myself do not know any other way into the casino. I can tell you this, and she kind of flips her uh, her her, uh, her hair and kind of polishes her uh, uh, black twist and horns, says the employees, all the casino employees are tieflings and they only employ, I'm sorry, tieflings. And they only employ tieflings. I pick up my okay. hat and adjust it a little bit and take the form of a tiefling. There you go. Oh, indeed, you might be very well suited to this, he says. Now, I can say here she kind of points out a couple of the other uh, spots um, looking to, uh, as you look at that map, you'll see certain areas that have like a green line for the door. She says, uh, these areas are doors to, uh, these doors are uh, to employee uh, only areas. They have a bright green trim and are magically locked. Um, getting into them might require you to obtain an employee pass card. Okay. Do you have other questions about the maps? The um, security mirrors, are they magical or are they just? Oh, yes, yes. They are magical security mirrors throughout the casino. I, uh, I did put those there with the uh, little red icons. Uh, again, I'm not that uh, wonderful of an artist. I apologize for uh, as quickly as I scribbled it. Um, but what they do is they project what they reflect into uh, twin mirrors in the security office area. All right. So surveillance of the area. Okay. And I can only assume that the coins and the statuette are being kept in the vault. That was my next question. Kind of vault is it? 
uh, I am unreally, I, I, I am unaware of. Ah. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, but she does point to the uh, room in the upper uh, left-hand corner with the dollar signs in it uh, as being the uh, the vault. Hmm. All right. Um, I'm trying to think of any other pertinent information we should gather about, uh, uh, if their employees are all tieflings. Yes. All of them. Hmm. Is there a certain, um, I think a tiefling, Do they have, uh, uniforms. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming they do. I mean, forgive me again. I've never been to the casino myself. I mean, I've, I've been wanting to find an opportunity to get back at Quentin for what he's done. And uh, I would dare not show my face there in, in fear of him uh, uh, finding out what uh, I'm planning on doing. Okay. I'm assuming that they would have uniforms of their own as well. Some surveillance is in order. I agree with you. Reggie? We should uh, formulate unless, a cunning plan. Unless anyone else has any questions they think would be helpful. I feel further discussion would be best for everyone to take place elsewhere. I don't think Understood. you want to know yes. what we're doing, deniability and the like. He nods and smiles broadly when you uh, show that type of professionalism. Uh, Snaps, well, he kind of looks a little dejected because he wanted to ask more questions, of course, because he always likes to ask more questions. Questions are what he does, and he wanted to ask more questions, but he looks at Reggie and he. If thinks, you have more questions, Snaps, I mean. Well, I do always, but I'm not going to ask them. Not right now. No. Okay. I will Violence. tip my head again and go back to looking like the hair and gone. And I'm ready to go when you guys are. All right, so uh, are you going to head to the casino? Well, she does mention that uh, she uh, um, is going to uh, provide uh, you uh, transportation to get to uh, the boats. Um, she does say that she did pay a dwarf who worked on the worked for the construction company to build the casino to provide her with information about the non-public areas. So she did does mention again, of course, that she's no artist. The map's accuracy might be a bit questionable. Okay. We're seeing if there's any other information that she'll give to you. Um, And his so, name is the owner of the private. It was um... Quentin Toggle oh, Pockets. Yeah, Quentin Toggle, Toggle Pockets. Toggle Pockets. Toggle Pockets. Yes, Toggle Pocket. I'll put that in chat for you, and I'll put that in the uh, in the oh, stream chat as well. Had to be a known yeah. Toggle Pockets. Yes, <laughs> yes. Toggle Pocket. Toggle Pocket. Toggle Pocket. <laughs> Is he a tiefling? No, he's a gnome. Gnome. Not a tiefling. He's a gnome. Got it. Okay. I don't have any more questions, except the ones I didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, after she, you're done speaking with her and such like that, um, are you going to head back to uh, your uh, hideout at the uh, Troll Skull Manor and uh, discuss more. Do we have time, guys? We, we have, have time. Until, we have until two nights, uh, two, uh, 48 hours, basically. Uh, right. So not tomorrow night, but the following night is when the uh, tournament will finish. I... So yeah, just over 48 hours to uh, get in there. I'd like to go back and uh, let's let's go back and talk about this. Okay. Your shot. okay. All 
So now you can make your way uh, back up to the uh, uh, Troll Skull Alley and to Troll Skull Manor and uh, can start planning your heist. Is there anything you'd like to do on the way back there? Uh, do you want to maybe try to see if you can't gather some information on your own? Um, yes. Uh, are there any other casinos on this or on our way, on our way to our... Um, our uh, most our casinos are uh, going to be uh, mostly down in the dock ward area because you'll have a few different ships. Uh, that they use as casinos in Waterdeep as well. Some of the older ships that are permanently docked in the area, um, you know, kind of like going to the river boats or something like that. Um, uh, a couple of them here and there. Uh, what type of information are you looking to get? Um, Snaps just wants to. You know, I think he he would uh, he would want to know more about the owner of the casino. If this is uh, she has a problem with him, then and that's what we're going to steal from him. The more information we know about him, maybe it might help. See if any other yeah. other casinos have negative information or feedback mm -hmm. on this. Well, the, the one thing to keep in mind about him is that he disappeared about ten years ago. She said, and hasn't uh, been seen. And also, if the place does get robbed, do we really want people remembering three of us asking questions the day before? Good yeah. Point. I mean, we can all disguise up, but. That is something else we'll have to work on, at least, too. Knowing that all of the employee uh, casino employees are uh, tieflings, uh, you'll definitely have to figure out a way, whether you want to use magic or disguise kits to disguise uh, at least Stinkfoot and Snaps, since Reginald has his uh, out of disguise. Right. By disguise. Looks good from afar, but if people look too close, they can see through it sometimes. I figure, just in case. Oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I, so, I figure with the ears, I can at least mimic the shape of horns, so they still kind of oh. take up the same space. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, if we have anything on the way we could procure, uh, I have a disguise kit. Rogue as a rogue, uh, I think I could do pretty good. But if I, I maybe I need to get a few extras just in case I need to try to appear as a tiefling. Maybe cure a few horns, maybe some uh, extra red makeup. Um, mm -hmm. uh, keep in mind too that you don't necessarily have to have these disguises and such ready for the first time you go to the casino, because uh, you could always go to the casino yourself uh, disguised as you know different you know, people uh, to go into the casino to kind of scout the area about if you wanted to as well. Yeah, are they red tieflings, blue tieflings, purple tieflings? We should not... Can we just do some there? recon first? Yeah. Yes. Also... All right, back to the tavern. I'm ready. There Make is a, a laundry room here on the map. Yeah, we'll go ahead. you want to wonder if you there go ahead may be... Yeah, I can pull the map back up. Yeah, let me uh, maybe we get some suggestions from some viewers. I wonder yeah, if we might be able to acquire ourselves some uniforms from the laundry. Ah, okay. Because I can certainly make it look like I'm wearing a uniform. If we can get our hands on a key card, I can walk in put on a uniform and walk out then we have two yeah but we would want to at least scout out trying to find ourselves a key card while doing reconnaissance for sure uh, so if you want um, you know kind of heading back to uh, uh your hideout, uh, perhaps maybe even chatting up some of the patrons and lift spirits. Uh, you might be able to get a bit of information about, uh, you know, maybe some of these people have been to the casino uh, since it's opened, uh, as it just has opened recently uh, within the past couple of days. And basically the conclusion of the tournament is supposed to be the conclusion of its grand opening. 
Mm -hmm. So there are uh, members of uh, the the, the uh, citizenry uh, that have been uh, over the past few days uh, traveling to the casino to check it out. I mean, as a nine hells themed uh, casino, you would think that the uh, Sword Coast would have enough of that after the events uh, happened in uh, Elsrael and Baldur's Gate, but apparently not. Apparently <laughs> <laughs> Oh. All right. Uh, yes, Angelus, they do have the opportunity if they want. Once they get to the casino, there are a couple of uh, a gambling uh, events that they can participate in once they get there. Uh, but yeah, so asking about um, down in the uh, Lift Spirits, everyone give me uh, perception or uh, persuasion checks. Uh, your choice. I'll take perception or perception. <laughs> I bump stellar into roll. honor. Right, gentlemen, stellar roll. Oh, oh snap. Discovered. 23 natural 20 on his perception check, or persuasion check, my apologies. Uh, yeah, you're able to get a bit of information. I mean, Stinkfoot and Reginald kind of walking around, you know, warming him up for you and everything, and casually stepping forward. Uh, snaps, you have so many wonderful questions you always want to ask. Uh, you're able to get a little bit of information. You do find out that the employees, the dealers, the bartenders, and other floor employees wear sleek uniforms that consist of black tuxedo pants and red jackets with thin lapels. Mm. All right. That was black, did. black pants and what? Black tuxedo pants and red jackets with thin lapels. Post that in the chat for you as well. All right. That's interesting. Ulysses uh, suggested uh, casing out the uh, tavern, the uh, casino employees, and then maybe uh, trying to get uh, to use their identities to uh, get in. Um, with, with the other persuasion, like with the other persuasion, uh, with, with, uh, so uh, walking about, you do find out that the employee pass cards are uh, made of a green metal. Embossed with a devil's smiling, winking visage. The only thing I would caution about that, though, is that uh, casing out one of the employees' places and coming outside of the area of where your heist is supposed to be. Uh, Probably wouldn't be something the Golden Vault would really look upon because these employees are not haven't done anything uh, to warrant uh, doing anything to them. So, kind of what you did with the last ties, you kind of got the feel that they kind of want you to to work with what you have inside there. Obviously, you can use anything else you want, go out and purchase things of that nature. Uh, but you know that might be overstepping the bounds, even for the uh, Golden Vault with the laws to actually go to a person's home and invade their home, you know, and, and their privacy and such like that. That's the only thing I would caution about that. And keep in mind, uh, for those of you that weren't uh, here uh, last week to watch the episode, we did give them uh, the uh, laws of Waterdeep that they're going to have to be working within as well so they don't get caught. Uh, with the uh, beautiful cold code legal of Waterdeep. So <laughs> they're definitely uh, making sure that they're not uh, trying to uh, uh, break any laws they don't have to. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, we can certainly so start by heading to the casino and just checking it out like regular folk. Do you want to go in dressed as you are? Uh, do you want to uh, have uh, like 
put on different disguises. I mean, you don't even have to really necessarily disguise uh, your uh, sizes or races or anything of that nature right now. Um, but, you know, you want to put on like fake noses, fake mustaches, beards, wigs. I, would, I definitely would like to uh, change my appearance. Uh, okay. Looking, you know, not anything extreme, but uh, yeah, Snaps would like to appear, uh, sort of appear as um, someone a little bit uh, well-to-do that uh, has a little bit of money. Maybe he's a little bit, uh, you know, maybe a little not bit foolish. Not so necessarily just like a, to a noble, a bunch of money. Like a high roller. Yeah, not a noble or anything, but you know, a high roller. Somebody who's, uh, he's looking, he's scouting. He's not really going to be throwing a lot of money out right away, but uh, he's going to be you know, good checking out yeah. the games and looking at it. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, go ahead and give me a disguise kit check. Okay. Uh, go ahead and use your charisma. Charisma. Okay. Or uh, you could use your dexterity. Your choice. Um, Both should probably be good since you were, you know. Okay. Sure. Oh. Well. Uh, your companions can easily tell you that that disguise is not going to work. Okay. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, uh, maybe I'll try another later. Uh, yeah, you can try a little bit later if you want to. Similar vein, I want to be less, I want to be more gnomey and less deep gnomey. Gotcha. Maybe lighten uh, your complexion a bit. Yeah, that'll work with a great roll. So uh, having witnessed a Stinkfoot uh, doing the disguise kit and such, if you want to use uh, make another disguise kit with advantage snaps, uh, Stinkfoot can help you out. Obviously, with the hat of disguise, uh, Reginald does not I have to really make Give you a pat on the shoulder. You can have a D4. Guidance. Yeah, Thank you. All right. I have all four. Nice. Oh, awesome. Okay, here we go. Uh, I will inspire well, you. I'll go for it once again, and I will try it with Dex. So fifteen plus the four from uh, from Reginald's guidance will give you a nineteen on your check. And yeah, now you've kind of gotten down. You have. Stinkfoot help with the makeup a little bit and get the complexion right and you know, kind of fluffed up the the, the uh, your little ass cot and such like that to so look a little bit more uh, like a high roller and uh, added a little uh, walking stick with you uh, to carry. Of course, it's just gold paint on the tips and the handle, but the, sure. the wood's still really nice. Okay, sounds good. Yes, and I'm I'm more gnomish, not deep gnomish. I like I yeah. said, I look more just to uh, the average, uh, you know. Gambling, traveling gnome that wants to uh, get in on the tables. Or whatever Being that the casino is owned by a gnome as well, that might bode well for you. You never know. Or not. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> or not. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, yeah. To... Go ahead. Stay within the realm of Herengon, but go from, like, the puffy, fuzzy rabbit to, like, the jack rabbit. Really thin, gaunt, long, straight ears, very tight fur, just entirely separate type of look. But nice clothing, or the appearance of nice clothing, if you will. Different color fur. Yes. Uh, we'll go with like a off-white. And whenever you're ready, uh, let me know. Uh, give me a, re a ready check in Rule 20. And uh, you can find your own way to the casino, or you can go ahead and take the carriage offered to you by Verity. Oh, yes. Uh, something else that can help you out also here in Rule 20. Um, obviously, your display names are set up. We do have our your display names down at the bottom of the uh, uh Rule 20 interface there. If you want to change that to just your character's name, uh, over in your chat, you can go down to the bottom where it says as. You can change that tab to uh, uh, rolling to speaking as your character if you wish to. Yeah, mine wasn't showing up before. It was weird. 
Aha, uh -huh, it works. Yes. I thought I'm I did that. the on like eight times. I'm like, Stinkfoot isn't in here. Good. Of course, yours would be after uh, Gimbal. Okay, so tell me how to do that again. I thought I did that before. Yeah, down at the bottom of your chat window in roll 20, where it says as. Yeah. You click on that, and you should be able to find Gimbal in there. Gimbal, well, there he is. And then anytime you roll or chat in the uh, roll 20, you'll come up. Yep, there you go. All right, so... Uh, Thank you. After making some preparations, getting some ideas about what you want to do at the casino, uh, obviously you want to uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of stake the place out a little bit to uh, find out what's going on, kind of scope it out. Um, you go ahead and uh, order the carriage that uh, Verity uh, had offered you, and uh, it comes and picks you up, uh, bumping through the uh, some of the cobbled streets and dirt streets, gravel streets uh, all throughout Waterdeep. Uh, you come into a uh, branch in the road over here. Do, do, do. Yep. Uh, and you see a freshly painted and lacquered sign uh, right here near the cliff ride that says, This way to the afterlife in gaudy gold lettering with an arrow pointing down uh, the uh, narrow branch towards the cliff side. <laughs> Uh, following this route for a short distance, you come to a cobbled turnaround and a lot where carriage drivers uh, can wait while their patrons gamble. And as you step out of the carriage, you're greeted by a red-robed tiefling uh, who says, uh, Welcome to the Afterlife Casino. Please uh, follow me down to the docks. There are boats there waiting to uh, uh, take you uh, inside. Lovely. Thank you, uh, Making your way down, you can see that there is indeed uh, a brightly lit row of docks down there where there are boats uh, that you can see kind of leaving from the docks and heading a short distance away where you can see the waters of the Sea of Swords kind of uh, enters into a wide mouth cave. Uh, waiting in line for a few moments, you see one of the boats does return and the farrier. Uh, Kind of very, very tall looking, uh, got a really thick hood uh, pulled over uh, their head and kind of holds out their arm and points to you. And it looks as if their uh, hand beneath the robe is just a skeletal hand and kind of points to the boat. Oh, get in. Guys, we're actually going to the casino, right? I whisper to my friends. We're going to the casino, not the underworld. Uh, give me a, a a history check or insight check or anything like that. Okay. Yes, yeah, Snaps, did you, did you kind of remember, this is more for Snaps uh, than Reginald and Stinkfoot. You're all okay with it so far. But you do remember that it is a Nine Hells themed casino. And that there is going to be a small waterway, which you notice on the map, uh, that uh, seems to be nicknamed the River Styx. So this would perhaps be the ferryman for the River Styx, or playing the role of the ferryman. Ah, it makes Please sense now. Uh, I got got lost in the illusion myself. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't want to go anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so after everyone gets in, um, you can definitely see, I'm not even going to make you make an Arcana check, uh, uh, Stinkfoot, as you can definitely tell there's some sort of minor magics, perhaps maybe cantrips or illusions uh, that are kind of making this person uh, appear to be like some sort of skeletal uh, ferryman. Uh, of course, you do re recall that all of the employees of the casino are tieflings, so most likely it's maybe a tiefling using like perhaps a minor illusion or something along those lines. Uh, the fairy ably navigates your boat into an underground channel. As the cave mouth swallows you, you hear music over the echo of a distant waterfall. Uh, the cave ceiling uh, rises above your heads and a dancing light and dancing lights uh, bob around uh, hangs to light tights above. 
and the uh, channel itself winds through the casino floor, splitting the cavernous chamber into two, passing under arched stoned bridges at various points. So give me a moment, and I'll bring your characters over to the map of the casino. And if you would, please go ahead and pull your character tokens out to where I'm going to ping for you. Right down here. Ah, I fell in the water. <laughs> so, of course, you can see the water running down the middle of the casino. If you want to flip back over to our map for us, uh, to Reginald. Uh, card tables and other gaming stations surrounded by clattering patrons fill the open space. A cheer rises from deeper in the cavern, uh, which is decorated to suggest uh, excitement, opportunity, and excess. The farrier steers your boat toward the left bank, and your boat rocks as it bumps into a, the wooden dock. The ferryman then raises one hand, gesturing at the glaring sights before you, and intones in a raspy voice, Welcome to the afterlife. Temptation awaits. What do you do? Ooh, so spooky. Patient wait. They really went all out for this, huh? Oh, yes. Kind of, yes. Kind of look around and feign awe while also checking to see if I spot anything interesting in the area. Uh, you do happen to notice that, of course, there are some. This appears to be a cashier station over in this area. Uh, this appears to be a ca cashier station here as well. Um, you do, if you recall, looking at the handout uh, of the map uh, that you were given uh, by Verity, um, there are games uh, located uh, on in these areas over here and over here. Um, there's also some sort of lounge back in this area. Uh, you do definitely look over and see the bar uh, up here to the north. Uh, there is this passageway over here. Um, that uh, you believe contain those stairs that head down, uh, which do lead down to the restaurant, which is somewhere uh, over in this area. Um, the tournament that is going on right now uh, is back uh, somewhere up here. And then if uh, the uh, map is correct, um, back in this area is employee-only areas. And then, of course, that would be perhaps uh, right in this area might be where that circus uh, that is listed on the map would be. And uh, you can step off the off the uh, boat and uh, into the casino if you wish. I Here we go, the guys. gentleman like to say, "Let's go mingle. See if we could uh, pick up any information." <laughs> nice, Ulysses. I'm feeling a very James Bond Casino Royale vibe. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, you're able to, uh, you do notice, that, as I mentioned, there are some games over here and some games over here. Uh, so since you're in this area here first, uh, let me go ahead and describe that area. First thing you notice, uh, looking about uh, the ceiling here uh, in these public parts of the casino is a 50, about 50 foot high. And you can see hanging stalactites uh, all throughout. Um, you do notice that uh, the uh, um, you do see the personnel wearing the uniforms uh, as they were described: black tuxedo pants, uh, sharp red uh, type uh, uh, form-fitting red uh, jackets with thin lapels. Um, you do notice that there are dancing light spells that kind of create flames of like a hellish hue. Uh, kind of float and bob at various heights all throughout the casino itself. Um, you do hear uh, there is music playing throughout, uh, like uh, illusory sounds uh, being cast throughout uh, the casino. It kind of, oddly enough, has like a weird folky country music type of sound to it. 
it uh, it's la- it's not too loud, but it's loud enough that you will have to speak at a higher at a little bit higher volume in order to uh, hear one another, especially over the din of all the uh, people uh, and the uh, patrons of the casino uh, talking amongst one another as well. Uh, you do happen to notice also. Um, that uh, the walls and stuff inside here are made of rough, naturally carved stone uh, all around the interior of the casino here. Uh, but you do notice that there are many games of chance all around you. Okay. Uh, uh, so as you come to... off, I was going to say, as you come off the dock area, you do notice that there are posted on placards near the docks uh, and rather large lettering it says rules in the afterlife stay out of the river sticks don't cheat cheaters never prosper don't accost or threaten other patrons or the staff keep your weapons hidden or sheathed at all times only employees may pass through the green trim doors when 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 Uh, so what do you go ahead, Snaps? What do you want to look up, looking about at? Oh, well, um, I was first going to okay it with my companions that uh, I want to casually look at all the games and uh, look at the different ones. I probably don't know uh, what I'm going to be looking at most of the games mm-hmm. and most of what's going on here, but mm-hmm. I do know that if uh, there's a bar, if they're drinking, then uh, that's probably where. I would want to go first, not necessarily just to get the drink, but to appear that I'm having a beverage so that that's my, that's what I would do. I would have a beverage as a, a, a gambler of well-renowned and ready to spend money. But first I'm going to get the finest drink I can get and then go check out their games and see if they're worthy. Okay. Well, as you're uh, heading in that direction, you, the first thing that you notice uh, is that, uh, of course, uh, this docking area here, that's where you saw the rules and such. Uh, you do notice a big sign hanging from the ceiling that uh, displays this area here. Uh, uh, it seems to be called Dis, uh, which you know is one of the layers of the Nine Hells. Uh, and looking about that area, you can see that it contains rows of copper slot machines and five uh, life and death tables. Uh, each with okay. different betting values on the different tables. Uh, the Life and Death is a game of dice as played between the house and a player. Uh, you notice that there's up to uh, five people can sit at the table, uh, but the only opponent that uh, each player would have would be the house. Uh, if you want to learn about those, you can always uh, make your way over to that table after you make your way uh, over to get drinks and such. Okay, that sounds good to me. What about you guys? Any other ideas about where to go? I say, you know, kind of like casually, like we're just talking about where to go, you know, trying to mm-hmm. appear. Yeah. Like, I don't want to break the appearance, like whispering to my companions, of course, but. Mm, yes, a, a beverage sounds lovely. So yeah, if you want to start moving your tokens up towards the north, you can start doing so. Okay. Um, as uh, we go through the tables, do I look at any of the uh, games where it looks like um, other people that are dressed really fancy are that not just normal people, but like. There's a crowd gathering or watching these people that are uh, like, not really around this area. Not really okay. around this area. You do hear again uh, some of the cheers and stuff coming from up here where you assume where the tournament area is. Uh, but okay. as you pass through this area and kind of pass by here, Stink, as you're making your way through, uh, you happen to notice that that area uh, has a sign that says Mineros above it. You see a narrow racing track dominates the center of this section. Uh, with the few shouting and cheering patrons uh, around it, uh, not gathered like around a big roller or a big uh, high roller or anything. Uh, but you do notice a number of rats scurry along their respective lanes, 
And as the rats cross the finish line, cries of victory and groans of defeat erupt from the patrons. And, uh, of course, just south of that uh, track, uh, you do see a pair of lounge chairs and a couple of cashier booths staffed by tieflings wearing shiny devil masks. Mm. And the, immediately, one of the first things you notice, Reginald, passing through that area is indeed... Faraday did have the correct position of one of the security member mirrors right in the corner. And you did notice that there are two security guards right there and right there. And there is one directly by you, Snaps, that is constantly looking around the casino, making sure no one is up to, uh, making sure that everyone is up, uh, is up and uh, above board and that no one's up to no good. Um, I'd like to keep an active eye out as we wander around to see if I can pinpoint or notice any of the security using or where they may be carrying a badge or their key card. Uh, give me a uh, perception check. Yeah. Uh Dust myself off as I'm walking. Give myself a quick guidance. Sure. So we'll do that. And one of those. Nice. Oh. 23. Uh, you do happen that every one of the uh, employees uh, does have one of those green metal cards, uh, as was mentioned. And most of them keep it inside uh, their uh, inside pocket of their uh, jacket. Okay. Duly noted. Uh, as you see, because you see a page, uh, one of the uh, employees kind of coming uh, out of this uh, door here. Uh, security guard kind of checks that area, and uh, of course, you see the person putting their green card into the inside pocket of their jacket. Did we notice how the uh, card works? Is it a touch, a swipe, an insert? Uh, it looks like a swipe, like a little okay. touch against, like a touch swipe thing against the uh, the door. Uh, give me an Arcana check. Will do. Oh my yeah, god! No, a ten's fine. Keep in mind we're only second level. This is tier still, still tier one. Uh, <laughs> very, plus, with you just having to have pass cards from the guards uh, in the. Uh, uh, Museum of Natural History, you also notice that very similarly uh, uh, with your uh, arcana that the card is basically kind of disabling an arcane lock uh, briefly, a line that passed through and the locks again behind them. Uh, but as you're making your way up into the area where you're at now, uh, you do see people uh, relaxing around some of these lounge chairs, uh, things, uh, things like that. Uh, and you do see a, a big... Uh, Signs behind the bars that does say bar mount bulge. Um, does feature two bars, uh, plenty of plush, comfortable chairs, cushions. Uh, you do notice that there are tiefling bartenders serving spirits and a bitter ale uh, that you notice uh, is called Brimstone Gulp. And uh, all of the ales being served in copper flagons, embossed with uh, prancing imps on the outside of the uh, flagons. Okay. Um, Snaps wants to order something different. Uh, with a quick, as he was trying to go through, uh, he was trying to keep an eye on the people that are. Um, the I guess you would call it the really uh, really wealthy, so he could put on airs as he's uh, more than he is. But uh, he was looking at you know the the cocktails, if you will, or something like that. Not too many wealthy and like really high roller or nobles uh, around in this area. Again, as I mentioned, most of them were probably up in the oh, tournament oh, area, uh, okay. where they might be uh, betting a little bit more. Uh, for coin and such like that. Uh, but yeah, you can get a few different other types of drinks. You can get like a, uh, uh, some wine or some bitter, some stouts, different types of spirits and such like that. 
Uh, each one of those would be about a silver piece, but the brimstone gulp is, uh, is there's not a charge uh, for the brimstone gulp for that bitter ale to uh, serve to any of the patrons that are gambling. Right. And you also notice that they, uh, if you wish, you could buy a cigar. A cigar? Uh, yeah, Snaps will purchase a, a glass of wine and a cigar. All right. So once or two, oh, I'm sorry, one silver piece for the drink and then uh, one copper for the cigar. Okay. And again from the bar, uh, you can also see yet another security mem- uh, mirror. I keep saying security member, security mirror over by this door. All right. Uh, having uh, procured my drink, are, is this uh, open? Are these lounge chairs open? Uh, yeah, there's a few of them there. You could probably find a place to sit. Okay. I just kind of look over at my companions and say, oh, maybe have a, a brief repose here as we uh, sip on our drink and just kind of take it all in, uh, scanning mm-hmm. the area. Um, and out loud, uh, uh, in between questions to uh reginald and uh stink i i say oh i i saw that they have in this lower area they have some of the games they in particular they have the life and death dice and did you see the rat races how novel and then uh now i I say "Uh, hey guys um shall we just go ahead and look all around just walk all the way around the whole area just kind of pace the joint in a low voice and then I go back to sipping my wine. Uh, it is really hard to hear in a low voice because of uh, all the music playing and all the noise, the gambling. You hear the, right. the, the clank of a coin being put down at uh, all the different tables, the screams and of joy of winning, and the uh, again the grunts of people losing as they uh, might lose a pot. Um, especially where you're sitting here, uh, you do hear a lot of the bells and whistles from the slot machines. Uh, over here, uh, again, cheers coming up uh, from uh, this area back in the back. Uh, and you can probably assume that these would be like the massage rooms and the spa areas. Okay. I'm going to try to chat up the bartender. New casino, how's it going? I'm new in town. How's the tournament I heard about? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Well, it's uh, really too late to enter into the tournament, they do mention to you, as the tournament has been going on. Uh, Currently, uh, they are down to uh, eight players, they mention. Oh. Totally interested in what she's saying. Uh, Go ahead and give me a persuasion check as well, as you're kind of talking them up. Uh, and after that, uh, after a little bit with that roll of a two, uh, she kind of says, uh, but uh, yes, enjoy. And she slides you a mug of the uh, um, the bitter ale, and uh, she moves on to another uh, patron at the bar. Actually, I'll sit closer to Snaps. <laughs> Nothing good from the bartender, I say in under common to Snaps. as quietly as possible and still have it be loud enough for him to hear. So do you want to uh, head across one of the bridges to the other side? You do know there's some more gambling going over here in this area, but you can see that area is uh, does have a big sign that says Avernus above it. Uh, you also know that there's a lounge back in this area, back behind uh, the uh, interior, the, these interior rooms. Um, You'd also head up into the area. Uh, you could head down the stairs, which is over here, down into the uh, the restaurant, if you wish, as well. Where would you like to go? Let me just pull uh, the map up in front of everybody again on stream here, just so I can remember where stuff is supposed to be. I wouldn't mind checking out the spa area because that has entrances to the laundry from two different points. 
we okay. probably should check out the tournament area. And something about circus reminds me of a dinosaur. <laughs> okay. So, uh, right, so we'll go uh, counterclockwise to the spa, uh, check out the back door if we can see it, and then casually go by the tournament area, see if we can go in a, and observe, or at least observe from outside for a moment just to kind of case it, then go to look at the overlook, and then come back around to the circus area, kind of counterclockwise. Sure, and I believe outside of the laundry was the stairs to the restaurant, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. uh, so everyone, go ahead and give me, you're not trying to actually... For this role, you're not trying to actually be quiet or be hidden. You're just trying to. I want to have everyone give me a group stealth check just so you're not standing out. Okay. Okay, oh, stick for it. Go for it. Nice. I can find myself. Oh, yes. You're all easily blending in. You're not making uh, any, you're not making a nu nuisance of yourself. You're not standing out in any way, uh, just casually walking around, checking out the sites. So go ahead and uh, Reginald if or Snaps, whichever one of you wants to lead the way and move in a certain direction, go ahead. Um, lead on, Reggie, since you're uh, probably better disguised than I am, even though I, I, you know, seem to be trying to play the part fairly well. Sure. Do we want to look at the lounge first or head to the spa? Um, I'm the way. just to go ahead straight to the spa. Okay. I will start heading my way on over here to, I believe, this door. Yep. And you should be able to open that door and head on in if you want. Sure. Lagothian Spa and Stygian Baths is the name of this area. As you get inside, the air in here is warmer and more human than the casino proper and uh, bears a sulfurous fragrance. A tiefling sitting behind a desk gives you a warm smile. Uh, you see curtains are drawn behind her. Uh, Dear souls, says the tiefling, care to enjoy a massage, relax in our sauna, or take a warm bath? Perhaps later. We just wanted to see what your uh, services are. It sounds uh, very enticing. Uh, yes. Well, uh, if you wish, uh, you can uh, receive a therapeutic massages. It's about 10 gold for an hour. Uh, or perhaps maybe relax in the wood-sided sauna for free, if you wish. Uh, the uh, area to the south, and she kind of points back towards the curtain in the southern direction, she says, uh, contains uh, steaming pools of water. And, of course, you can pay two gold uh, for uh, two hours in the pools, or, of course, five gold for an all-day pass. Very nice. It sounds Aww. like a lovely day. It's a lovely way to end the day. Uh, yes, yes. Many people uh, seek a little bit of uh, uh, refreshment and refreshing uh, uh, massages and such uh, after a long day of, uh, of winning. Ah, uh, yes, that's what we're here for. I believe uh, after uh, a few more winnings, I think that uh, we may have to try this either this evening or sooner. But thank you very much. As I start if heading you towards the door, to investigate uh, the uh, the uh, uh, facilities. Feel free, and she points to the curtain behind her. Ah, well, okay then. I will stick my head in the back room and take a look at the facilities. Mm hmm. And I just kind of casually look around at baths. And mm hmm. Investigating, and I see that back door, and I take note as I keep going. Hopefully, no one oh, else is in it. here. <laughs> it does have green. It does have the green trim around the door back there in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, the one to the south of you, Reginald, does not have a green uh, trim to it. 
if I recall, that went to the bathhouse. The bath. Yes. Shall we check it out? It may be a nice bath. Oh, you should be able to click on the door uh, right there. It's a little smaller than normal. <laughs> Yeah, in there, there's uh, you do see that there are very uh, four very uh, uh, nice sized uh, steaming pools of water. Okay, noted. And I step back out, and I'm uh, looking at the door. Is the door over there? Even though it has a, it's a one for employees only. Is it uh, locked or is I mean not locked, but is it? Does it have? It is one of the warded okay. doors. Is it labeled? Yeah, is it labeled yes, or does it have? It says, it says laundry, employee only, employees only. Okay. As I'm making my way back well, out. Uh, for, I'm going to kind of wave snaps over real quick back towards like the, oh. the bathhouse. I don't think Come they will really be paying too much attention to the folks in here for privacy reasons. Mm hmm How do you think would be a good way for us to acquire a card? I've noticed a couple of the employees seem to keep it in their inner chest pocket mm -hmm. for their jacket. We can always pickpocket one, but of course, you know, that may not work out very well. And then as soon as the employee notices that it's gone, then maybe an issue. So the, a, a diversion of sorts would probably be one of the best if we had to acquire one from one of the employees. That's the only thing I know. Just take one off of one of the employees. Stinkfoot does have a novelty mug of alcohol at the moment. <laughs> we true could possibly utilize that. Oops. I didn't mean to spill my drink on you. Oops, my friend is drunk. He didn't mean to fall into you. Ah, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it's, it's at least a start. Uh, we probably Possibly. shouldn't leave Stinkfoot out there on his own for too long. <laughs> right. Just up there Let's... standing awkwardly with, like, the tiefling at the counter. Kind <laughs> <laughs> of standing outside there with his uh, mug of uh, brimstone gulp, kind of looking around <laughs> by himself. Uh, but I, yeah, don't you want... can... I don't want the steam to mess up my makeup on my disguise, so once I heard steam room, I kind of wandered out there and I just go. take it in the sights. Yeah, you can uh, touch up yourself before you head back out. Uh, okay. Uh, Snaps real quick. Right. Uh, but yeah, that. you're able to make it out, back outside the uh, uh, of the spa area with Stink. And it is about our halfway point of the session tonight. So why don't we go ahead, take a small intermission here for about uh, five, seven minutes or so. And uh, we will come back and continue with the adventures. Does that sound all right for everyone? Okay. Good. All right. Well, everyone stick around. We're going to take a small intermission and we'll be back shortly.
All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pop Squats. Uh, get to five uh, tier one subs. That's very awesome. I will make sure to uh, thank uh, Mr. Pop Squats for that as well. Sorry, I had to take my contacts out uh, in my uh, area of the country. We had a fairly cold evening and uh, my heater kicked back on. I thought we were getting ready to have some spring weather and the heater kicked back on. My contacts started drying out from the uh, uh, heater up here in my loft uh, office here. Um, but yes, thank you so much for the subs. We appreciate that very, very much. Um, also, if uh, anyone's uh, wanting to uh, follow us on any of our social medias, you can find those down below as well uh, in our About section. You can have a link to our link tree that has uh, all those different places to follow. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, if you follow our YouTube channel, we do put all of our streamed uh, shows do a little bit of editing for those, and we do uh, pop those up on our YouTube channel. Uh, that way, once they disappear here from uh, Twitch uh, for the video on demand, you can go to the YouTube channel. I think that's uh, at Master of Dungeons Official. Uh, again, that is in the link tree below. Uh, we do have a little bit of news, too, uh, as we do like to talk when we come back from intermission with a little bit of the uh, um, chat. If you have any questions for us specifically uh, about D&D &D or about uh, our goals, uh, things about our channel or brand, uh, you can ask those here as well. We do, as I mentioned, uh, we do have a link for the uh, player application that we will put up in the Discord server uh, in the stream announcements channel. Uh, we will also pin that up. Anyone that wants to uh, apply to uh, play uh, the live games uh, with us, uh, the first one we'll be bringing people in is not next weekend, because that will be the second part of this one, uh, but the following week, uh, I believe that's the 19th. Um, no, next week is the 19th. That would be, be the 26th, I believe, uh, is the first episode that we'll air uh, with a uh, little stream with a couple of uh, guests coming in from our community uh, to play uh, in the uh, two-part adventure uh, for the level three adventure. Um, so again, we'll get uh, that taken care of this week. We also uh, will hopefully uh, have some stuff to put into the merch store uh, later this week as well. Um, some uh, probably just start off with some t-shirts and um, uh, slowly add a few extra things in there. Um, maybe we'll put up some polls in the Discord channel, see if there's anything in particular uh, that people are looking for, uh, ball caps, uh, things uh, along those lines. All right. Uh, anyone have any questions for anything uh, for any of us uh, in the chat? We definitely appreciate everyone uh, watching the stream tonight. Uh, a clarification for everyone in chat for the YouTube. There you go. All of our YouTube videos will be added to our archive, or all of our Twitch videos will be added to our YouTube archive the week after they stream. And we upload all of those on Mondays. So from the live play game through Friday, those will all go up the following Monday after that. So all of those from last week will go up tomorrow? Yep. Tomorrow at right. 3 p.m., all of last week's videos will be going live. Excellent. So if you did not have a chance to watch the video of On Demand of the second part of the Merkmeyer uh, episodes, uh, you can watch those uh, tomorrow uh, on YouTube as well. Uh, 3 p.m. Excellent. Thank you, Otter. Absolutely. All right. So, back to the situation at hand. You find yourselves outside of the spa, kind of investigating that a little bit, discussing ideas about how you're going to uh, get one of these employee uh, badges, uh, the, the pass cards that they keep on their inner uh, pocket of the lapel. Um, and uh, discussed making your way over to the tournament area to see what's going on in there. Uh, you do know that a circus, the circus performances happen every four hours. You probably about have about close to four hours, maybe a little less uh, since you've come in. Uh, maybe about three and a half uh, hours before a uh, performance uh, is to be put on again in the circus area. So you have a little bit of time to check out the uh, tournament area, perhaps maybe even make your way back down to some of the uh, different games and maybe do a bit of gambling yourself. Sure. Okay. Um, Sounds great. Quick clarification question to start. Mm -hmm. Around what time of day did we arrive at the casino? Uh, just after lunchtime. Okay. So, still, there was probably a lunch, uh, like a luncheon show, uh, and then they'll probably have another show just around 
uh, where it'd be like if you wanted to have like an early dinner or something like that, and then obviously they'd have another show around uh, the time for a late dinner. Okay. So it's still very well around midday. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you had your breakfast, you went and met with her with uh, Verity, uh, taking the time to make your trips and such back and forth, and got here uh, shortly after uh, midday at lunch. So yeah, you've got a bit of time. Okay. All right. Um, lead the way, Reginald. I'm ready to go check out the rest of this um, this area. Give you some fun player art uh, from some of the uh, different sections so far. Oh, okay. Look at that boatman. That's a creepy fellow right there. Now I know why uh, Snaps was a little bit hesitant to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Three jagged dragon ante. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We got games of chance. This is a cool character art. Right? Right. Ooh. Heck yeah. Very nice. So yeah, you can make your way up to the north. Uh, I do want to remind you quickly, however, if you, as you look to the east. Uh, you do happen to notice that there is the stairwell heading down to the restaurant. Uh, and, of course, you do notice that there is another door behind it that says laundry, employees only. Uh, oh. Back behind those stairs. Okay. Yes, I forgot about that door. All right. Shall we go get a menu to see what's on for dinner while we go and look at the tournament? You certainly could do so if you wish. Doesn't hurt Either to know way. what food is there. Sure. Uh, give me a second. I'll go ahead and take your tokens and move you down uh, to the area where uh, you would come down the stairs and into the restaurant. Sure. Right. Snaps if will be we're... looking for any other doors down there while he's going down, thinking about, hmm, yeah. food, great. Doors, yes. That does yes. put you right down there. Uh, there's the stairs, of course. It's just the stairwell that leads down. Okay. I figure if we're already at the stairs, we might as well look. Of course, yeah. Okay. I'll, Coming uh... down into that area, okay. uh, you do notice that the stairwell itself led about 20 feet below the casino floor, uh, down underneath here. Uh, coming down the spiral staircase, you do notice that uh, the dining area does sit on the edge, uh, on the ledge uh, behind the waterfall uh, that uh, you kind of pass by and through, uh, making your way down the river sticks in the middle of the casino. Uh, you do notice that the ceilings here are uh, a little uneven, but it's about 12 foot high, the ceilings are. And the walls are very smooth. All right. Uh, I need you to see a few people uh, dining uh, in the uh, restaurant itself. Okay. And as you come to that area, the one thing you noticed, Reginald, with your passive perception is directly beside you is another security mirror. Directly to your right. I use it to, like, straighten my bow tie. There you go. Uh, and then uh, the uh, so one of the the hostesses uh, come. One of the hostess comes over, uh, another uh, tiefling, and uh, does uh, hand you a menu uh, if you would like to uh, have anything to eat. And does gesture to any open tables that if you'd like to sit. And here is your member, uh, your menu. Ooh, we actually have a menu handout. Oh, we actually do we have a menu. I'll post that in for chat as well. Or... Okay. Stirred sliders, an abyssal chicken uh, egg. Omelet. Yes. Well, since we're here, we may as well eat. Uh, Snaps uh, was thinking all business, doors, doors, doors. Ah, uh, food. <laughs> I, um, I gesture to Snaps to kind of bump into me as he walks by, and I'm going to try to push on this door behind me as if I've been I, bumped into it, trying to make room for Snaps to walk by. 
I do so. Oop. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Maybe uh, the door kind of opens, and you look inside, and you see it as a uh, kitchen. Uh, uh, pardon me. Large. And they kind of look around and they chuckle a little bit. And, uh, you see again some tiefling cooks back there. Okay. Um, well, I would like to uh, get something to eat, and I, I tell my companions, um, "Sure, get a table." Sure. Okay. Does so. the waterfall seem to cover the whole outcrop, or is it just like through the center? Oh uh, yeah, just basically through the center there. As the water kind of falls down uh, uh, from the uh, small um, river sticks that uh, drops down uh, into the uh, the Sea of Swords, uh, the little bay area out there. I pick the table closest to the edge and to the water, so that it will be the loud yeah. roar of the water, so that uh, I feel like we can speak openly a little bit louder sure. without being heard too far away. Sure. Totally and uh, I would like to ask anybody, uh, also, if anybody's watching, uh, any, if anything that they would like uh, for s uh, Snaps to try from the menu, <laughs> because he is quite hungry. So I'm open for suggestions, because he does have no idea what most of this stuff is, uh, <laughs> coming from, uh, you know, underground where he's from. Well, it you do recognize... Like the chat food. wants some food, too. Yeah, it, it does. Uh, you know what Sturges are. Uh, those are fairly common in the Underdark. Oh, yes. it's a little, uh, yep, yep. Do you know what Atyug is? Right. Oh, yes, yes. We know what that uh, is. You, uh, the stench cow uh, is probably uh, something that's more native to the hells. Of course, abyssal chicken is as well. Uh, the pan-fried fungi actually doesn't sound too bad as an appetizer, being that uh, stinkfoot and snaps are uh, originating from the Underdark, and fungi is something that uh, is eaten there commonly. Uh, of course, the desserts. Um, uh, the Night Hag's Delight is actually just a blackberry tart. Okay. So whatever you'd like, go ahead and just make sure to deduct that coinage. Keep in mind, uh, 10 copper pieces equals one silver, 10 silver pieces equals one gold, and 10 gold equals uh, a platinum. Or it might, it might be five gold or platinum, I can't remember. I have to remember the addition that we're playing. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, uh, taking Mr. Papa Squat's advice, uh, fungi and uh, fungi was definitely going to be on the menu, and uh, he would act actually like to order the Night Hag's Delight, the blackberry tart, as he says. I will, I will have the dessert, and uh, since life is short, I will eat dessert first. And, all right. Uh, all right. Yeah, so I'm sorry, 10 gold is a platinum. Uh, there are Electrum pieces uh, that are in 5th uh, edition d and I do not use Electrum pieces, so do not worry. I will never give you Electrum pieces. I will convert it. <laughs> All right. The Night Hag Delight sounds delicious. I, myself, am a huge fan of hags, but I'm going to go with the uh, Stench Cow cheese plate and some fungi. Okay. I'm going to go so, with uh, a complimentary you... cup of coffee and a night hag as well. All right. So, yeah, make sure to deduct uh, your purchases from your uh, uh, money. And then you can take some time here uh, in this area where there's not really a whole bunch of people that are going to overhear your conversation. Uh, obviously, you're uh, still in view of the security mirror, but at the same time, uh, you don't know if there, you don't think there would be any uh, audible transfer, uh, transfer, uh, transfer from, from here to the security area. So uh, go ahead, speak freely. Okay, uh, guys, uh, as I stuff mushrooms in my mouth, um, securing one of those pass cards, um, I have, we haven't seen everything yet, but it looked like that uh, private area of the laundry room would be appealing. Perhaps we could somehow procure the pass card from the laundry room attendant. If we could make a, a similar pass card that looks like a pass card, like a, D, uh, a fake pass card, to maybe exchange it, and then um, she wouldn't think that it would be missing 
if we were somehow to get it, uh, maybe we could even do this tomorrow when we come back. Or uh, today would be better, but if we can do it tomorrow, if we could fashion something, maybe, you know, I don't know how, but we could come up with something like that. What do you think? The card is key. We need a key. We need one of those cards. We've got to get a card, apparently. It seems like that's going to be priority. There's probably um, cards in, left in someone's laundry, too. Um, I know we need a card to get into the laundry, but I think digging through the laundry might um, score us a forgotten or overlooked uh, card in someone's pocket. Good point. Good point. Um, alternatively, there may be more chaos, if you will, in the tournament area. It may be a little easier to bump into a guard and have it go missing and not be directly like, they're the only ones who bumped into me today. Mm, true, true. Yeah, it is more secluded and private, but at the same time, no one else was in there. I see yeah, your point. If, okay. If the <laughs> spa attendant has only been bumped into by one group of people throughout the day and their card is missing, it's a little, little more pointed than a tournament where there's a lot of people mulling through throughout the day. Now, see, if you wouldn't have started every uh, session with inspiration, so keep in mind you did start with inspiration today, uh, that would be some sort of uh, thing that points out that would get uh, get your group uh, inspiration. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, thanks, Reggie. I, I forgot that we got inspiration at the start of these, so I will add it to my <laughs> sheet right now. But normally you don't, but I always start, uh, since Dungeon Master can give out inspiration anytime they want, I always give out the inspiration to start the game. Uh, for those of you that are still new to 5th edition, uh, inspiration allows you, uh, when you make a rule 20, uh, a, rule, a, a check with a rule 20, uh, you can spend your inspiration prior to making the roll, and it will give you advantage uh, on your check, which means you roll 2 die 20 and take the highest. Uh, I know some DMs use it as uh, like a free reroll. Um, but since we are playing Adventures League rules, we do have to run the uh, rules as written. Uh, so the players, if they want to use their inspiration, will have to declare it ahead of making their roll. All right. So um, you're planning on discussing going to the tournament area to perhaps maybe try to lift uh, one of the security cards from perhaps maybe one of the guards that might be in the room. Any other ideas or things that you would like to throw out there? Talked about going to the laundry would obviously be a good place to pick up uh, some employee uh, uniforms. As mm -hmm. mentioned earlier, um, Reginald, who I could assume the uh, appearance of that with the hat of disguise, can go in, put on an actual uniform that would give you basically something like two uniforms. Uh, you might um, even be able to. If you can get one before you head home, you might even be able to replicate one. Uh, I or have you, if you, a question wait. for the DM. Sure. Um, for Adventures League rules, yeah. each of us can only bring one of our magic items into the game. Correct. That's tier one, would, yes. Would that prevent me, for instance, if we got a key card and I was able to get into the laundry room to borrow the bag of holding from one you of my other party members. You certainly could do so, yes. Okay. I wasn't sure so, how that interaction yeah. would work. Now, since Snaps uh, has his bag of holding and you do still have Verity's bag of holding. Mm -hmm. And who's carrying that, by the way? My apologies. Is, is uh, uh, Stinkfoot carrying that? Sure. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I have sure. it. hearing so, it. <laughs> so theoretically, if I can, if we can lift a card, I can go to the bathroom and become an employee. If you let me borrow your bag of holding, mm -hmm. I can get multiple uniforms and just walk out of the laundry like nothing happened.
Uh, I'm sure. Like a plan. I have this all hinges on. Go, uh, go ahead. Think. I have mage hand. I don't know if that will help with lifting a badge. And I can also cast a silent image, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Well, um, well mage hand's not really going to help with lifting a badge unless if you were an arcane trickster, I might allow something of, uh, along those lines. Um, but uh, we don't definitely don't want to fall into mage hand uh, being the uh, fallback for uh, for everything when it's not really uh, intended uh, for that purposes. But if you were an arcane trickster, however, you could use it as a distraction or something of that nature. Uh, keep in mind, though, uh, it still shows a spectral hand. If you were an arcane trickster, it would be invisible. So uh, you can, if you want, uh, if you want to cast spells uh, to uh, help, uh, you, I'd probably have you make some sort of sleight of hand check. Uh, sure. Or something, especially if it's uh, just something that has somatic components to kind of hide those. Uh, obviously, if you have something with a verbal component, uh, for those of you, again, new to D&D that might be watching, uh, spells when they're cast usually have one to three different components, one being verbal, one being somatic, which is uh, hand gestures, and one being material, which is something like maybe a bat guano or uh, uh, the eye of newt or something like that uh, for <laughs> spell components. Um Instead of uh, in lieu of spell components, of course, uh, I believe. What did you have for your arcane focus, Stingfoot? Uh, bah, 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 bah. My quarter staff. The staff. Okay, oh. so you can use like a uh, a staff or an orb or something like that in lieu of uh, using some of those different components, as long as they're not uh, of monetary value of a certain point. All right. Yeah, so, component uh, pouch. Oh, but component pouch. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you're able to plan that a little bit out. Uh, anything beyond that? Or are you wanting to uh, head up to the uh, tournament floor? Uh, real quick. Between the three of us, who would probably be best suited for the lifting? Okay. I, may, I am semi-decent with sticky fingers, out of a 10, it's probably around like a 5 intermediate. Okay. Probably I'm, the rogue? I've, I've got... Uh, I'm proficient in sleight of hand, and I've got 5 bonus. Okay. Sleight of hand. I'm proficient with a 4 bonus. So... So he snaps. Snaps okay. and myself are right about the same. We can figure out how that's going to end up. Okay. I figure it's worth checking out the circus, even if we're a little before the show. Kind of get the layout. Mm -hmm. In absolute worst case, that makes for a pretty good distraction if we need one. So and what if, if we're both uh, really good at you know, sleight of hand? I had the idea earlier about placing the key card with a dummy key card or a facsimile of the key card, something that looks like it. So I, if one of us could pick the key card and the other one could put the other key card back. Sorry, I went ahead and uh, moved everyone's tokens outside. Yep. How would okay. we go about making a new card? Uh, yeah, you wouldn't I be able know. to do that right here. Yeah. Because yeah, it would it probably be, be for work, tomorrow. That might give us some problems. Something to look for, maybe to do tomorrow. Okay. When we come back, I should say, whenever it is tonight, tomorrow. Sure. And okay. just uh, last thought is one of us has a broom of flying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Broom of flying, and that think about using it for sat out, sat out on a overlook. <clears throat> that may True. be an alternate entry point if we need. Mm -hmm. We would have to contend with the one mirror in the room, but it's an option to to think about. It's a long run from that downstairs. Well, I guess we come from up top. Mm -hmm. Never mind. I got back. Yeah. 
All right, so let's go ahead and head over to the uh, tournament area, as you were mentioning, yeah. checking that out next uh, to get a little bit more information. Uh, heading down into this area, you first see it says uh, uh, Kania is the name of this section, one of the other layers of the Nine Hells. Oops, I didn't mean to repost that again. My apologies. <laughs> they they sell food here, yeah, too. More food. <laughs> <They didn't know. laughs> uh, but, uh, you do notice the steps lead to the sunken floor of a gambling haven ringed with pillars of black basalt. Seven three dragon ante tables uh, take up the floor space. A three foot high shelf carved of the far wall bears a glass case, displayed in which is a golden statuette of a winged devil. Standing next to the display case is a tiefling security guard. And indeed, okay. that is the statuette that is going to be given out. The statuette of the Irenes is going to be given out as the prize. So when Verity mentioned that the money and the statuette might be in the vault, you notice that it is not in the vault, that the statuette is actually on display in the room. Notice. You do notice the five closest tables uh, to the uh, entrance are high stakes tables of 50 gold piece buy in open to uh, anyone. Uh, but you do notice that uh, the, uh, um, I'm sorry, these tables over here, uh, right here, um, that uh, the uh, tournament is still going on right now. It's called the Grand Mineros Invitational Tournament. All right. Well, that's uh, uh, well, big money rollers have been here. A lot of a lot of oh, money yeah. being put around. Yeah. Okay. So this is a place that uh, we could aspire to be one day. But I think that uh, now that we have our eyes on the prize, what do you think, guys? Um, of course, with your passive, you do notice down here, Reginald, that there is another security mirror. Yay. Okay. So, but you do notice a couple of, uh, uh, you know, tourists, people attending the casino, casino goers kind of glancing over the display case and examining it and admiring it and then, you know, pass on their way. Security guard just kind of looking around. Um, well, looking at the people playing, uh, Snaps would like to just casually walk by that uh, himself and take a, take a, a quick look at it and mm -hmm. uh, you know see if there are uh any any mechanisms or traps uh, that i can see from just looking at it briefly and then walking away not trying to draw attention if it looks sure. like it's on a uh, pressure plate you know, that the display case itself is about two foot wide about two foot deep um okay. also it's about three foot tall probably weighs in the area about 25 pounds the whole case itself okay um Go ahead and give me an investigation check as you're going by and passing. Yes. I was kind of going to do the same thing. Can I assist him? Sure. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you. So I'll give you advantage. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> 22. Uh, as you're walking by uh, with the help action from uh, Stinkfoot, he kind of elbows you and you almost didn't catch it, but you happen to see uh, as he kind of nudged you that uh, you spot a line of barely visible runes inscribed around the perimeter of each pane of glass. Okay. I'll uh, just casually walk away and... And you do like notice... More. Yeah, the uh, front of the display case is, uh, does have a hinged door. Uh, the glass pane there is a hinged door with a locked latch. Okay, and that front pane of pain has uh, runes inscribed on it also. Yeah. All the way around the bottom of All every section has these barely visible runes. Okay. I'm going to check that or did I not see it? Pardon? Can I Arcana check those runes? Sure. Um... Obviously, you're not sure exactly what it does, but obviously, yeah, it does uh, have some sort of magical trap. Okay. 
while they're off investigating, I am just standing by the game that's being played currently, just kind of trying to mm -hmm. make it look like I'm paying attention, seeing how many employees might be bolt mulling around the room to see if there might be an opportunity for us. There's a couple uh, servers come back from the uh, the bar with drinks for the uh, people that are playing. Uh, the table you're standing by. Uh, you do notice that there is a person, um, let me go through, uh, there does seem to be a, uh, uh, a, a human with a very childlike enthusiasm and uh, kind of uh, acts, uh, almost plays as if they're naive uh, towards the game. Um, and they go by the name of Jetta Moore. Mm -hmm. um, you also notice sitting at that same table, um, there does appear to be a, another a, a tiefling actually. Uh, it kind of uh, kind of looks around the uh, the theme and decoration of the casino a little bit with a little bit of disdain, uh, but uh, kind of shakes their head every once in a while uh, and uh, goes back to continually uh, concentrating on the game. Uh, and they go by the name of Nightshade. Oh, sorry, one more time on that name. Nightshade. Okay. Uh, the other person at the table uh, is uh, another human, uh, very determined, the no nonsense uh, player uh, that is uh, uh, keeps up a very constant stream of good natured chatter, uh, but is completely concentrating on the game. And the other person uh, does seem to be a halfling uh, that uh, every once in a while you see someone put out a really high bet. And the uh, uh, halfling makes really condescending remarks about someone betting high. Uh, and their name is Wumpus Thistledown. Right. Um, with the guards, uh, the guards that are in here, are they all dressed the same, like a security force or security? Are they wearing the normal? tuxedo pants and um, red jacket with the lapels? Uh, no, the security guards, uh, they, uh, you noticed there was about five of them actually out on the floor itself as you were walking okay. about. There's the sixth mm -hmm. guard uh, that uh, is nearest the uh, area here. Uh, they do uh, wear different, uh, secure, very similar uh, uniforms, uh, but obviously, you know, they have uh, their weapons are prominent um, on their persons. Okay. Uh, and you okay. do notice that they uh, are both, all, all security guards are equipped with a heavy crossbow and a mace. Okay. And they also knew wearing some sort of leather armor uh, over their uh, uniforms. Okay. Is this place open 24-7? Yes. Okay. Uh, I think we should um, get out of here, unless you guys think there's anything else to do. Um, I can't really say that out loud, but uh, I think I'm done here. I'm I'm going to make another pathetic attempt to uh, chat up this guard. Ask him about the okay. statue. Tell him I'm new in you town. Back to curious. I've never seen. Yes, you can attempt to do so. I believe in you, Stinkfoot. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Which check would that be? Sorry, per persuasion? Yes, persuasion. Something else I'm horrible at? I should have played a bard. <laughs> Just generally curious. Uh, he uh, actually stepped forward, you know, kind of looking there, and you get a little close to him. Uh, he's like, oh, don't touch the case. Don't touch the case. Touch the case. Oh, it, it's just, it's beautiful. Yes, Enjoy yes. Your tournament. Uh, and just as you say that, uh, that uh, halfling that's at the table beside you, uh, Reginald, and snaps, uh, shouts out in agony as he is knocked from the tournament. And he stands up and starts kind of saying a few uh, words that we're not going to pronounce on our PG or PG 13 stream. And uh, <laughs> then, uh, kind of stomps off uh, in the direction of the stairs. 
And uh, much to the uh, delight of the other players at the table, as he was a very condescending halfling. And uh, they all, and the other uh, people at the other table over here kind of cheer them on uh, as uh, someone's taking them out of the tournament. All right. Since I'm striking out left and right, I'll lean over to the table and say, Hoof, good riddance, huh? Oh, yes, yes. They all kind of raise whatever spirit they're drinking. And, uh, oh, 16. Uh, shortly man. after that. Uh, so, yeah, give me an idea of what you're talking about. What type of information are you looking for specifically? Uh, they're what probably in his bonnet. Pardon? What bug got in his bonnet? Guess you're better off without him, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. He, uh, for some reason, not really want to play any of the high bets. Very condescending in the way he acts. Uh, better that he's not here. It would definitely make the tournament more happy. Uh, a little bit more fun for everyone. Was he even a good player? Uh, he was decent. Oh. Huh. Good luck to you, and I'll uh, I'll wander out. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. And they uh, motion for one of the uh, servers to bring you a drink. Oh, excellent! Another free rot gut. I would gladly accept it. Brimstone <laughs> <laughs> gulp. <laughs> the uh, first one is downstairs, most mostly uh, not consumed. I left it when we ate. Sure. I'm not trying to get too drunk tonight at the casino. We've got a job to do. Yeah, Snaps right. never even finished his wine. He he has the the cigar stowed in his uh, in his disguise, but uh, mm -hmm. he didn't even finish that wine. He didn't want to drink anything. Sip on it for appearances. Okay. Um, you do have an idea of what the uh, tournament floor looks like. You do know that one of your targets is now in uh, that uh, tournament area, which is I the statuette. Oh. Okay. Uh, shall we go try to get some of uh, the fun festivities? Shall we go get some gold? We, I think we're winners. I think we're going to win. We should play as we can observe everything that's going on while we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I've got 14 gold to lose. Oh. That's a whole lot of nibs. I've got 11 left. <laughs> well, let's head on, head on back down. Okay, make your way on over to the uh, different games. Uh, you do notice that there's a few games uh, around the casino. Obviously, there's the Three Dragon Ante. Uh, it's a card game. I do not have the card game, nor uh, do I have it uh, in the Rule 20 room. Uh, there's an alternate way to play it if anyone decides they'd like to play that. Uh, there's the game Life and Death is a dice game. Uh, there's also a uh, game of War. Uh, and there's also Push Your Luck. Uh, that is uh, in the game of uh, War and Push Your Luck is in the uh, Life and Death dice game. Uh, plus, of course, there's the Copper Slots, your Copper Slot Machines. Uh, the Copper Slot Machines, you can insert between one and nine Copper Coins to pull the lever, which causes the reels to spin, stop and display a row of five rooms, and you have a chance to win on those. So which games would you like to Give it a try as you're you know, kind of looking about, watching uh, the comings and goings of all of the different employees. Snaps is interested in trying the life or death dice game, but he's also interested perhaps in looking at, you said there was a racetrack with rats? Well, yes, there was uh, what appeared to be uh, the uh, area that was uh, Mineros, I believe. Uh, there was a racing track. Well, first things first, uh, he would like to try some dice game, the life or death, when it's a, when he can. Okay. Well, so basically how this game works is uh, you place your bet. Uh, you can place uh, a bet of uh, for the life and uh, life and death ones. There are. Give me one second here. You place uh, 
one copper, five copper, one silver, one gold, or ten gold. Those are the different bets that you can make at the life and death tables. Put that in chat for you. There okay. you go. Uh, how the game works is uh, each player, uh, you and the, ha the house and the player, each roll a die 20. If you roll lower than the dealer, the house wins. The player that rolls higher than the dealer reclaims the money they bet and wins that same amount from the house. So if you bet a gold, you take you get your gold back and you win a gold from the house. However, if a player ties the house, they have two options. The player can surrender and lose half their bet, or the player can go to war, in which case the player must double their bet, and the player and the dealer both roll again. And then, of course, you can push your luck. When you win a roll of life and death, you can opt to push your luck on your next bet. In this case, you bet uh, everything you won on the last roll. And if you win, the house pays double that bet. So anyone that wants to participate can. Uh, and everyone's not playing against each other. You're just playing against the house. So anyone that wants to bet can do so. Again, those are the way you can bet there. Uh, just let me know uh, what you're going to bet if you're going to participate. And Snaps is going to bet. Uh, is uh, or uh, going to uh, participate? Whoa! Whoa. Shoot! I'll put in a silver. So Gimbal's or Snaps is going to bet a silver. Reggie's going to bet a, uh, Reginald's going to bet a silver. Anything from Stinkfoot? Same. All right, everyone's going to bet one silver. All right, everybody, give me a die twenty. You're betting. You're betting against the house. So roll your die twenties, and I'll roll my die twenty. Stinkfoot with a twelve. Reginald with a one. Snaps with a three. It's like golf, right? The lower number, the better. <laughs> uh, Not quite. Stinkfoot. You win a silver, and uh, Reginald and Snaps, uh, the house only got a four, uh, but they still beat your three and your one. Oh, this is why I don't gamble. <laughs> and the deal oh, yes. uh, the silver from the two of you and slides the silver over to uh, Stinkfoot. So you get the, you win a one silver, Stinkfoot. Uh, uh, place your bets, place your bets, says the tiefling behind the. Uh, uh, table there in the dealer's position. Anyone? Anyone? You see a couple other people come over and place a gold uh, piece down. Whoa. One person one person puts down 10 gold. Anything from Reginald? Um, I think if you'll excuse me, where can I find the bathrooms? Uh, they put over uh, to an area back by the lounge. Okie dokie. Uh, we're going to say the privies are back there because oddly enough, there are uh, no privies on the map. I didn't see any on the map, so I was like, I'm, I I'm just going to ask. Um, <laughs> Maybe that's what the I... warm pile, the warm pools of water was for. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> the bathhouse. No, no. Welcome oh, to our ooh. All that steam? No. Bad. Um, I will pat Stinkfoot on the shoulder and give them a nod, and I'm going to head to the bathroom. Okay. All right, so the next bet, go ahead and give me your die 20 rolls. 14 for Snaps, 15 for Stinkfoot. Stinkfoot. 10. So both of you have gained back your silver, the, or actually I should say uh, Snaps, you gained back the silver that you lost. Stinkfoot, you gain another silver. Okay. All right. The person that bet 10 gold wins against the house, and the other person that bet one gold loses. Aww. Any more bets, or would you like to try out the slot machines or anything of that nature? Is there anyone at one the table more. we can chat up while we're uh, the two gold betters? Well, you could probably chat them up a bit uh, if you wanted to. Uh, Feel free to uh, start talking. There's uh, one of the people that just came up that sat down that uh, bet the, uh, um, the one gold and just lost. Um, 
you do find out that uh, uh, the person that lost, his name is Georgie Simmons. Uh, he's kind of a down and out loser, uh, but determined to have a good time. I just can't seem to, uh, doesn't have any luck when they bet. Whoa. Oh, boy, snaps. I think your oh. autocorrect messed up. Bet in the gold <laughs> piece. <laughs> And Stinks for the stone, gold. Very conservative and keeping the pace. He's won Stinks. Already won two silver. All right. So give me your uh, die 20 rolls, please. 12 for Stinkfoot. Um, where's Reginald? I need a guidance. No, I'm just kidding. Unfortunately, this is just a street. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, boo. Oh, no. Dealer takes no. everyone. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm sitting here beside my dejected friend who lost a while ago, too. So, oh. um, you do see, of course, the, uh, the these are the uh, life or death tables where you're at now. There's also the uh, the copper slots if you wish to play any of the slot machines. Um, is there any yeah, I've at the slots. Say so what? Is there anyone at the slots that I can chat up? I kind of picked this table so yeah, I could be yes with the dealer and yeah. Uh, I can't let you know from what you're from what you're trying to do. There's really uh, nothing that you're gleaning because you did make a fairly good persuasion check with the uh, um, the uh, players at the uh, tournament, but they okay. really don't have any sort of information that your group would be looking for uh, okay. other than what Verity's already given you. Uh, but you do notice that the slot machines there's a, uh, a hard-nosed uh, copper slots player uh, who thinks that she has the machine's algorithms all figured out. Her name's Lorna Brassborn. And uh, her sister, uh, they're both dwarfs, uh, Lowell uh, Brassborn. She kind of thinks that gambling is a waste of money, but it's here with, his, uh, I'm sorry, him. He's here with his sister, Lorna. Uh, he's just kind of watching Lorna as she plays the uh, slots. So if you wish to play the slots, you can put in one to nine copper coins, and then you can pull the lever, and then you can uh, give me some dice rolls. Well, All right, so think foot at five copper. Go ahead and give me, roll me five dice six. Whoa. Ones and fours. Nice. Full house. Uh, you've got three of a kind, so that will double your money. Nice. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. It pays two to one. So, yeah, get you back your five copper. So, you win five copper off your five copper bet. Uh, if I'm incorrect, chat, feel free to correct me. Uh, I uh, do not gamble myself, so odds are something that I really... <laughs> Thank so I thought, two, you know, you know, for everyone you bet, you get uh, one back. So yeah, two to one, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let me go ahead and have 5d6 from uh, Snaps. Snaps also gets three of a kind. Nice. So paying out two to one for your uh, nine copper. But I do want to give you a little bit of time to make it back to your uh, uh, hideout to maybe get some ideas on the planning of what you want to do tomorrow. Uh, okay. Obviously, the next session that we play, you can do a little bit more planning at the beginning of that as well before we put okay. the plan into action. Uh, but well, you can go ahead. I certainly have something I'd like to attempt this evening. Sure. Okay. So I'm done gambling. I wanted to. I wanted to wait till everyone was done gambling. I didn't want to just shoehorn the conversation away. Oh no! Oh, was there anything you wanted to do while you went over to the uh, the lounge while they were uh, hitting the slots and playing some life or death? Yes, I went into the bathroom and hung out there for a couple minutes and readjusted my hat to adjust myself into the form of a tiefling with like pulled back horns 
and a employee attire. Okay. Ooh. And I'm going to attempt something kind of kind of silly. Hopefully it might work. We're going to see how this goes. I lean over real quick. Uh, Stink, where's Reggie? I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> I whisper back in underdog. Don't worry about it. He has a plan. Okay, don't forget session one plan. of the first part one. Session one. He said he's just here to for the chaos, right? All right. What are you doing, I, Reginald? I did say I was here for the chaos. Um, <laughs> I'm going to head up to the spa. Okay. And before I go through the front door, I'm going to tap myself on the chest and give myself a quick guidance and walk through the door. I'm so sorry to bother you. This is my first day. I, I took some, some clothes into the laundry. I think my key card fell out when I was in there. I, I, is there any way you can let me in with yours or let me use yours so I can get my key card? I, I need this job. I can't lose this. Can you please help me? Okay. Uh, do me a favor. Yep. And give me a persuasion check. I'm going to give you advantage because you are wearing, you nice. disguise yourself uh, as the uh, uh, employee. But before you do that, one moment though, okay? Yes. Um, I do need to make a check. Uh, uh, if do, it's do, against the disguise, it's a DC 13. That is what we're going to check on. Yep. Come on, chaos. Let's do it. Chaos, <laughs> chaos, chaos. And they are making, I believe, it is an investigation check. I think. I think yep. So. Investigation check. All right. This is where we want the DM to roll low, don't we? Ooh. Um, she kind of looks at you. I mean, doesn't succeed by a whole lot with a 16. Keep in mind, uh, for those of you wondering, we always roll with advantage. We take the left roll uh, if advantage or disadvantage does not apply. We only consult the second number if someone has advantage or disadvantage. Uh, so it doesn't make it by much. Um, so give me your persuasion check with advantage. Okay, I will roll my d4 real quick. So we uh -huh. have a three for that. And persuasion. Oh, it's a Reggie. 12. Oh, Reggie. Uh, she oh. doesn't necessarily come through and, you know, say anything about your disguise, because obviously it's a magical disguise and such. She goes, mm -hmm. Well, if it is your first day, you should also know that there's no way that I can let you in without your own pass card. I suggest you find it, or uh, you'll probably be looking for another job. But if I locked it, if it fell out of my pocket in the laundry room, I can't get in there. Like, can can you open it for me? I don't want your card. It is not my problem, she says. Now. People will be coming in here soon. And she kind of rushes you away. I appreciate you listening, at least. <laughs> and I will leave. If you wouldn't have had all of those horrible rules in there, we might have gotten something. But yeah, she's not definitely, definitely not going to, uh, to let you in with her card. <laughs> no. Chaos dice yeah. have spoken. Well... I have hey, it was a valiant attempt. It was a valiant attempt. Awesome idea, man. That was awesome. That was that was that was slick. It was good. It was good. This begs the question now of I'm now standing in the middle of this place in employee garb, looking like an employee. Do I try this with a different person somewhere else? Or do I go to the bathroom and switch back? Um your player character is uh, your character. You have agency to do what you'd like. <laughs> um, hold on. What would Reggie do? <laughs> Panic. <laughs> um, I 
Well, there's Bring the employee's only entrance to get into the lounge, but I'd have to talk to someone to possibly get me in there. Um. Eh. Uh, I will say at about this time, uh, from you know going to the bathroom, coming back out, your companions, mm -hmm. uh, they're gambling down here. Uh, you do spot them uh, stepping up from the tables, kind of down in this area, down uh, to the south of you. Yep. Do you want to go meet up with them, or do you want to uh, continue on? Uh, because they won't recognize you. No. Since you're in um, the employee garb and look like the uh, um, the, t the tiefling. I am going to try this one more time. I'm going to walk up okay. to one of the bartenders <laughs> and quietly explain oh, the boy. same story and same thing, give myself a pat on like Pat on the chest, like to calm myself down. Guidance, fuck uh -huh. up. Explain my case and see if they may be slightly more sympathetic. Okay. Uh, they don't notice anything odd about your uh, your uh, disguise. Okay. So a D four. So we have another three. Come on, dice. Do 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 something for me here. Persuasion is not good for me. Nope. They, they're, they're, they, nope. The dice don't nope. want it to happen. Um, they didn't really see through your disguise, which is great. Uh, they're not going to. They definitely sympathize more than what the attendant did uh, at the uh, spa. Uh, but they're really busy to uh, stop as uh, uh, it's getting closer to uh, the uh, uh, time for uh, the uh, next performance of the. Uh, um, circus, uh, and the other guy says, uh, the bartender behind there says, and, and it's also getting close to shift change, so uh, I, I really don't have time right now. Well, I I appreciate the sympathy. I I guess I'm just gonna go uh, cry one out in the bathroom real quick and hope I can fix it before the end of my shift, uh, if you'll excuse me. Jeff James is a four. Well, um, oh God, chat, do I wait around until shift change and try and get into the back, <laughs> or do I go change back? Oh God, this, this, <laughs> I've gotten myself into a predicament here. How long is it till four? Uh, probably about a half hour or so, which is when the next, uh, right after that is when the next performance for like the early, uh, dinner performance of the, the, uh, uh, circus. So just before then there'll be a shift change. And then after that uh, is when the, uh, performance would come up. Um. Do, do we know if the employees come in and out on the river sticks boat or do they come a different way? Uh, There's no well, other way, right? That is, as Verity mentioned, she she thinks that that's the only way in or out. So it wouldn't be odd. I was making sure it wouldn't be odd for Reginald, the tiefling laundry girl, to ride out with us on the next. True. Do they bring their key cards home with them, or are they stored here? Would be another question. That would be another mm -hmm. question. Good, another question, yeah, because there's some good uh, suggestions for that in the chat um, about mm -mm. you know getting those cards. So, hmm. mm. well, keep in mind too, uh, as we mentioned earlier, because there was something about you know following them home and all stuff like that. Uh, that would be outside, kind of remember the realm of what the Golden Vault does, because ah uh, yes, you could, you could target them in line to try to lift their card. Totally would be uh, be acceptable, but following them actually to their own home. Uh, would be a little bit uh, pushing the boundaries as you are do good at all costs and following someone good their, at all costs. Yes. Yeah, following someone to their own home would actually be intruding on uh, them who have then they haven't done anything. Uh, I may they, have misdescribed my intentions on that. I just meant when they leave work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, 
call them home not, guard. Call them up home. in their shower. Yeah. So I am going to kind of lean down into my spell book. Um, <laughs> Bring it up to your face. <laughs> Reg, how's it going in there? What are you doing? Reply to this message. <laughs> mm. Oh, give my ears. ears. Oh. Go ahead and give me a hand, if you would, Stinkfoot. Oh, of course. I can roll low with that. He can roll low with that. Yes, he can. Um, you do notice that uh, this uh, guard kind of uh, looks in your direction uh, over here. Kind of starts oh. uh, wandering over. Kind of still checking out the slots, you know. Uh, but of course, remembering the uh, rules that are right nearby where you're standing, you have to kind of glance up, and he might think that you're breaking. He probably doesn't think anything about the the message or anything like that, but just wondering to make sure that you're not cheating with any sort of uh, magics or anything like that. Uh, but kind of starts slowly making your way and and then making its way, making his way in that direction. Uh, oh. What do uh, Stink and Snaps do? I uh, immediately rolling. pull something out of my bag and I say. Here, here, it's right here. And I pull out a, a small bag, and I've got some, uh, you know, some leaves in it. And here's your medicine. You don't need to cough in your book. Here, here's take this medicine. As I take uh, the the drink that he was. Are you still holding your drink? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I say here. Put it in your drink. Here. It, you, it'll be okay. Your medicine right, is right me, here. Give me a performance check. Your choice. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was just trying to. I mean, the spell uh, does go off, so Reginald, you can. Oh my gosh! <laughs> a five. A five. All right. Yeah. Oh, way to go. Yes. Uh, we're we're simply making up for session two from last week. That's all that's happening. <laughs> the scales are leveling. He does come over and uh, uh, does inquire about uh, what you're doing. Uh, he noticed you casting the spell uh, and uh, wants an explanation. I'll try once again. I'll say, uh, yes, my friend here, he's got a condition. Uh, he got it uh, many years ago working in the mines. He has a really bad cough and he was trying to find um, his medicine. Uh, he wants to you know, try to, you know, lean out of his book to get the medicine but his cough is really nasty and we're getting ready to getting ready to go we've already gambled we've we've won some and we lost quite a bit uh so we're not about ready to go and i just keep chatting him up and telling him that and then well, i help him with his medicine. They, uh respond to you is like if he can't find his medicine why would he not just look through his pouch instead of casting a spell i saw him cast a spell i hand him i hand him my mug and I say, I'm trying to track down the person we came with so we can get out of here before I choke to death on the sw swill completely and hand him the swill and I just start walking towards the sticks boat. As if I'm just offended by the fact that he even come talk to me while I'm choking on his crappy free beer. Okay, so uh, you've actually told the truth because that, you know, that's a great excuse. You're just trying to find your friend using the message spell. So uh, yeah. you will take you will take the will and kind of look at it over and just kind of watch you. He says, well, yes, it does seem time for you to go. And he kind of motions towards the boats and uh, takes the uh, swill, sets it down for one of the servers to pick up and kind of goes back to his station. I love your casino. It's beautiful. Reginald, you can uh, respond to the message spell from uh, Stinkfoot. Um, what I tried didn't work. I look like an employee. Shift changes in 20 minutes. Should I try to get in or leave? Oh, boy. How, how easily can I share that information with Snaps? Jeez. This sticks person right here, probably not very well, even if I... Say an undercommon. Oh, you, can, you can speak an undercommon and lean over by his ear uh, and say it. You could probably say it in a normal voice by his ear. It would be like a whisper. Other people wouldn't necessarily hear you because, like I said, the, the gambling, the noise of yep. the machines, everyone cheering and, and you know, crying, uh, when they win sorry. or lose, music is still going on. 
the last thing you hear from that message is please advise. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I lean over to Snaps. I give Snaps an update, and I give him the old eyes of like, yes or no. Yes. <laughs> All right. Nice Our and rolls loud. Are great. Nice and loud so that this beautiful sticks boat person can hear. Hey, Mom. Oh. I'm having another one of those coughing fits. I think we're going to head home. See you in a little bit. <laughs> Go ahead with your plans for the evening. I'll see you when you get home. All right. Okay, hon. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> it is a whisper that only each one of you can hear, but that's okay. <laughs> I communicated that we have to leave and that they that Reginald should go along with. Yep. <sighs> I... Okay, so... Uh, Getting on the boat, uh, you do uh, with uh, Snaps and Stinkfoot. Uh, let me see here. All right. Uh, you do happen to see uh, two employees uh, for the shift change here uh, getting onto uh, the boat with you. Okay, this is what we needed. Hmm. Well, I was giving you a, a like a small percentage chance, uh, and I did whisper a roll to myself, and I rolled an eight out of a D100. So, yeah, there's a couple of them that got on the boat with you. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to put myself in a position so that Snaps and I are flanking them, and I'm just gonna do my best horrible drunk singing impression to try to get as much attention onto me, giving Snaps room to do what he needs to do. All right. All right. And I will uh, wait for his cue as he does what he needs to do. I, they're there, and I'm like, you know, trying to cater to what he's. You know, his issue of coughing and singing. And at the same time, I will attempt to procure a key card. And I will roll for that, I suppose, whatever, sleight of hand. It would be a sleight of hand. Keep in mind, you do have your inspiration. And that's what I was going to use. I'll use my inspiration. Darn it. I forgot I had that for all those rolls. Okay. Uh, well, your rolls are pretty bad. That inspiration was not going to help. Yeah, it wasn't going to help, but I forgot it was an option. Uh, oh. But it's funny. Uh, you are able to swipe one of their pass cards. Okay. All right. Um. Hey, Mom, <laughs> the doctor could see me really soon. I think we should just come straight home. <laughs> And snaps and stink. You follow the boat. The boat does take you back outside uh, to where you can climb the steps to the waiting carriage that Verity uh, was where the carriages were waiting outside. And uh, obviously, casting that spell, uh, you're able to send that message to uh, Reginald. So, Reginald, you may stick around if you wish, or if you know that your companions have swiped one card. Um. Unless I, uh, you want to attempt on the other one, uh, snaps. There is another employee on the uh, boat with you. I'm still <laughs> singing and leaning into him real good, like trying to get him to help me stand up. Okay, I will wait until we're almost right till we're getting ready to get, well, the exit dock. Okay. So we can get off of the boat. Yeah, keep in mind that if uh, you don't have inspiration, a one of your uh, fellow players can give their inspiration to you to use. Given. Okay. All, All right. right. I'm on it. Inspiration gone. 
Go ahead, sleight of hand with advantage. Uh, you are unsuccessful, but it is not so bad that they notice you. Okay. As your DC was a 15. Okay. And unfortunately, Reginald was not there to give you a pat on the shoulder for guidance. Ah. I'm walking around the casino doing that to myself at the moment. Don't worry about me. So, uh, Snaps and uh, Stinkfoot are uh, now outside by the carriage. Reginald, uh, last chances for anything you want to do uh, for a shift change, unless you want to stick around while they head back to the uh, the uh, hideout. I am going to let a die decide how chaotic this is going to be. Evens, we see what happens. Odds, we get the heck out of here. All right. That is a one. It would seem that I am going to go to the bathroom like I told the bartender I would, have a good cry, turn back into <laughs> myself, and proceed to leave the casino. The uh, gods of the uh, Golden Vault must have helped on that roll, as uh, you definitely do not want to get caught. Discretion is the better part of valor. If you're able to trade, change yourself back into your normal appearance, I should say the appearance that you took on when you came into the area, uh, into the casino for the first time, and are able to make your way down to the docks, uh, onto the boat, and uh, make it back to your friends. Uh, let us see here. There is one other employee uh, from the shift change on your boat. One last temptation. One last temptation. So I will wait until we are disembarking from the boat where they might have a second of weird balance where I could help steady them, get out of the boat. I'm going to give myself a pat on the chest before doing so and use my inspiration. All right. Sleight of hand. So we have a four. Use inspiration. Sleight of hand. With so advantage, 18. 18 will get you a second yes. pass. Yes, Woo. yes. All right, okay. that's two. That's awesome. And with Verity's, car, uh, with Verity's carriage, you're able to make your way back to the Troll Skull Manor. You have two pass cards. You know where you could probably get some employee uh, uniforms. Uh, most likely in the laundry room area. We'll bring everyone back over here to our map of Waterdeep. And you do know that the shift changes every eight hours at four bells in the afternoon at uh, midnight, and then again at eight bells in the morning. Okay. Uh, you're back in Troll Skull Alley someone. at your uh, manor. You can go up uh, into the uh, attic. And uh, we've got about a few minutes left here in the stream. So uh, any ideas about what you would like to do? Uh, some different, uh, some perhaps maybe just some uh, uh, early planning before uh, we come back next week and uh, actually plan out the rest and then put your heist into action. Well, folks, you know, I'm going to be jumping into different characters, I should really work on my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> that might be oh. something I need to work on a little bit. <laughs> you do have some... Some, some information, of course. You do know that the statuette is actually in the tournament room, if you recall, mm -hmm. and the is actually in the vault. So, I got one key card. Mm-hmm. So one key card. We've got one key card. So mm -hmm. we still have to go to the vault. We need to get in the vault. Maybe. If, if we were to get the money, we gotta hit, We need to get the 5,000 gold. Mm -hmm. Also, we have to get the... Statuette. Statuette out of the tournament room. And uh, splitting up is not necessarily a good idea most times. Uh, but... I think we, if anything, when we were going to 
execute a plan. I think diversion of sorts would be a, a good thing. If we can think of somehow doing a diversion. I was thinking about the security guards. If the security guards are, you know, they're, they're dressed differently. Um, and we're going to have the passcodes. We know, you know, if something goes wrong, then the security guards are going to be activated and go to a certain area to run and try to... We made a diversion last time with the Allosaur, the mechanical Allosaurus. So perhaps we could do something similar, but different. Just at least to get uh, eyes away from the prize, so to speak. What do you think? If we could get into the security room. Mm, the security room right yeah, next to the yeah, vault yeah. entrance. I don't forget you do have your hand out there. I'll show that to you all again. If we can get into the security room, that is where they would be monitoring all the mirrors from. And if we know shift change is every eight bells, whoever is going to be in there is going to be in there the, for that shift. If we can somehow disable or give them an impromptu nap, if you will, that frees up our ability to move a, a good bit within the space. I um, have an I idea about, the about that nap. spell. <laughs> I, I happen to know a little bit about a sleep spell. Yeah. So I that may come in handy. Everyone that I just cast a simple message spell and the guard was on me like nothing. So we all did fail your uh, sleight of hand very, uh, very. Uh, for the seven on your side of hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, just reminding that them. That was that... also in the middle of the casino. If we're back in the employees area, you might have a bit more lee room with that. Mm -hmm. with just, that. just finding it out, the guards aren't ignorant to spell casting. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it is one of the room, uh, one of their rules, no cheating. So they're probably looking out for people using magics, things of that nature to uh, uh, try to cheat uh, the games of chance. So there definitely uh, seem to be more on the lookout for those. I'm over here like I could have infinite coffee. The first cup is complimentary. I can be however many people I want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, looking at the map, looking at the map, I'm seeing right across from security, right across the employees only a corridor, there is a circus prep animals area. So. Could perhaps they could see what animals are there and maybe create some chaos with the animals mm -hmm. that way that they could uh, make some havoc. We wouldn't want to hurt anyone, but well, some kind of diversion of sorts. Then uh, go in security, put them to sleep either magically or somehow or other, and then uh, go procure to the vault at the same time, uh, possibly figuring out what we can do about getting the statuette. I don't know. Possibilities to think over until that we uh, go back tomorrow. Did yeah. you guys discover anything when you got a closer look at the statuette? Uh, yes, it has runes. Uh, on the glass, it has runes all around the bottom of it, and it has a lock on it. So it's going to be locked inside of a glass, inside of a glass case, but there are some sort of magical runes. And I think... Um, Stinkfoot was able to procure a little bit of knowledge about those. And the so kind of a tricky thing is, she doesn't right. just want it to be stolen. She wants it to be embarrassing. So if we were to run in, throw a bag of holding over the statue, run out the tournament area to the overlook, hop on a flying broom, and split, it's going to defeat the purpose of embarrassing him. Uh, Embarrassing them. So. Right, right. Uh, okay, so leave something behind that uh, kind of looks like the thing, and then, oh, it's not. Oh, what's happened? You know. All right, so uh, since we are coming to the end of the stream, that gives everyone something to think about. Uh, you do have, of course, access to the Roll 20 room between now and next uh, Sunday for part two. Uh, perhaps what we have everyone maybe come up with. Uh, like maybe a, a five or ten step idea, a different plan that everyone can present when we come back next uh, Sunday for uh, part two. 
uh, maybe discuss, merge those uh, plans together over the first uh, half hour, 45 minutes of the session, and then we'll spend the rest of the time uh, putting the uh, heist into action. Does that sound okay for everyone? Sounds great. Sure. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, then we will go ahead and uh, bring this to a close of the end of part one of the Stygian Gambit. Uh, first of all, thanks everyone that uh, dropped in to uh, watch the uh, stream tonight. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, once again, also, Mr. Pop of Squats, thank you so much for the uh, five uh, tier one subs to our, our followers. Uh, we want to, uh, we can't appreciate, I mean, we can't say enough how much we appreciate that. Um, Again, if you weren't able to follow the whole stream, this will be available uh, on demand tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, all of our streams from this previous week will go up on our YouTube channel. Uh, so if you have a chance, want to uh, have a take a chance to watch uh, part one and two of our first adventure, you can do so as well. If you have not joined our Discord uh, community Discord, you can hit the about section below us. Uh, you can find out where all of our socials are. Uh, you can also just click on the Discord panel that will invite you over to our uh, Discord community Discord server. Uh, as mentioned earlier, when we are finished tonight, we are going to go to our Discord server in our stream announcements channel. Uh, if you do have to have the uh, stream uh, news and announcements uh, role, which you can select in the roles channel to uh, access that, we'll pin that. Uh, application for any of our viewers that want to uh, apply to play uh, the live games with us on Sunday evenings. That will be only for uh, one uh, adventure at a time, which is two sessions. Uh, we will bring in another uh, other guests uh, for the uh, future uh, adventures. And of course, uh, if we get to the point where we've uh, gone through, those that want to play will come back around to uh, everyone uh, uh, and let them uh, play another adventure as well. Um, I think think is there any other anything i missed guys anything else we want to uh talk about before we uh raid someone else playing some D D or something i think that covers uh -huh. everything on my end okay and uh, as we mentioned earlier Otter did put that up in the chat uh look for the merch store having some stuff in it uh, we are working on some different designs and things like that. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you'll be able to pick up some uh, uh, different T-shirts and uh, things of that nature. We are got we do have some pretty cool designs uh, so far for some of the shirts, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, we'll have some of those out to you uh, this week in a merch store. Uh, but other than that, uh, let's go ahead and find someone else to raid real quick. Let's see who we've got uh, that we can raid and do a raid with. Let's see, we do have, um, that is, they're running a, oh, let's go ahead and raid the folks over at Old World Charm. Sure. Some good so folks good over there. there. Good group. Okay, so before I start that, I do want to say uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, watching tonight. Uh, very much appreciated. All the support that we've uh, gotten in the past three weeks since we started streaming has been uh, really great and a little bit overwhelming at times, but very much appreciated. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start this raid. If you want to join, just uh, join the raid up top there, and uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, next uh, stream will be... Um, Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. for Dungeons and Deliberations. We'll see you then. Thank you so much and happy adventuring.